Welcome to the Clive Barker Podcast and part 15 of our Dungeons & Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77, set in the capital city of Isordurex in the Second Dominion. Today, Squad 77 solve a riddle, heal a god, and spy on their rival Squad 78, but they still make time to shop for a new VCR. And now here's Bentley Widget to fill you in. All right, so last time when the group was arguing about what to do next and trying to fix the door, Zoe and Ralph got a message from their gods that they couldn't ignore. They teleported away with Chertovir, while Musette and the new guy Richard went to investigate Darther City. They only made it halfway when they were attacked by some kind of dragon that really messed up my truck. But they got away. Jonathan also did some scouting of his own. Welcome, this is episode 15 of, of uh, BarkerCast Jericho Squad 77. Lori, you weren't here last time, so we're going to do... Uh, I'm going to recap from uh, Zoe's point of view. So, Zoe, while you were recovering uh, from the home invasion, eating waffles and listening uh, to the planning and the arguing, and you found yourself looking inward, there was a growing feeling of unease, a strange heat that caused uh, you to be uncomfortable. You learned that Squad 78 was going to come up in a couple of days and try to deal with whatever is happening in Darther City. Something about the name Darther City, just thinking about it, made you even more uneasy, more fidgety. Uh, there was something else you needed to do, but what was it? Chertovir returned, and he and the new guy... What was his name? Why couldn't you pay attention? Uh, he, they fixed the door, and now it's supposed to be magically locked. And you stood outside, and you looked at the comet... Uh, that passed in the sky in the comet you kind of see a halo uh, you connect your goddess has been trying to contact you uh, a set you felt it you saw it in your mind symbols and patterns a hand uh, wings and a heart Ralph uh, something ha was happening with him too the god hand wrapped around him was moving and squeezing and there was talk of going to Darther City not yet something else first Ralph knew it too. Uh, symbols appear in your head. The, the express coordinates. The contact was so close now you could not speak. Tears in your eyes. Uh, heat in your body moving you. It moved you to the table. Ralph knew. He moved the table too. You rearranged the tiles and in the back of your mind this should seem crazy but it was the right thing to do. You could not speak only wordlessly plead for them to uh, come along. Ralph joins you. You appear in a dark cave, and then Chertovir arrives. After the destruction of Midian. After the unraveling of the fugue. After the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions. The Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. You're in a dark cave. Uh, you just uh, you just appeared there. What do you want to do? Well, I don't know. What do I want to do? Who am I with again? It, you, uh, Chertovir and uh, Zoe are there. Okay. Yeah. So Zoe, now you're here, but you're kind of wondering, like, was that all in your mind or was that real? That that feeling is kind of gone. It's like either you served whatever purpose you were supposed to serve or or 
that was all just some kind of a crazy thought and maybe it's not uh, maybe it's not real after all but then where did these symbols come from why would they take you anywhere so um yeah you're you're in a cave right now it's dark if it's dark um i do have a light spell that i okay. can do at will so all right and and what that does is it puts a it makes something of yours a light source like you could do if you've got something in your hand or well, I usually have my uh, my special <clears throat> dagger with the Ankh on it. I can probably yeah. turn that into a light source. That will help. Yeah. Okay. That'll All last right, longer so than my torch. You you brighten up the cave. The this is kind of what you see as far as the layout of the cave. Um, what do you want to do? Well, I guess we just start moving forward. <laughs> okay. And Zoe must take the lead. Are you okay with that? Since you have the light source. I don't really see I have much of a, cho a choice here. All right. Well, and Turtle okay. Bear says, I'll do whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> sure you do, Shota Bear. Uh, do we have a preference? Any particular way you're thinking of? Forward. Just forward. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. I guess we'll go this way. All right. You tell people right or left. Uh, uh, if anyone, if can you see me? <laughs> I can see you. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah. Richard over here says, "Where are the?" Holy crap! Are? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he, you, you, you bump into a, a giant sphinx uh, creature. Sphinx. Yeah, he says, uh, "Hello, hello." Uh, you're finally here. And he kind of looks over your shoulder and he says, "Where are the rest of you?" Well, <laughs> okay. Just as an aside, um, sphinxes usually like to ask riddles, so uh, be on your best riddle game. Well, then that counts me out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the librarian should uh, answer something if he uh, if if we're asked anything riddleish. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Sphinx. What's going on down here? You you're just hanging out? Well, I'm I'm here to test you, uh, but unfortunately, I'm supposed to test your entire group. Oh. Uh, by the way, my name is Sun Sun Mahava. But Sun uh, Mahava. they call it... around here they call me Sunny. Hello. Oh, great! Nice to meet you, Sunny. I am <laughs> Ralph, the Green Man. Uh, hi, Ralph. I've heard about you, but I've never met you until now. Oh. <laughs> Well, I don't know what to say about that. But you have a librarian named Chodevere. He lost his bowl. And uh, Zoe has Actually, a Actually, I, I have the bowl right here. It's on me. Oh. Well, maybe Chodevere shouldn't hold on to that anymore. You know, they, they broke into the house and they took it for, they took it out of my room while I was asleep. We, you, it's not my fault. Oh, well. Okay. Then. And we And we got it back. Well, I'm sorry I forgot. Sonny says... Uh, so how soon are the rest of you guys going to get here? Uh, I don't know. That's kind of a relative question. Relative to what? I mean, it could be soon. It could be later. I don't really know where they are right now. Sure, uh, here says, well, I thought they were right behind me. Yeah. Yeah. Normally, they're pretty talkative. Hmm. Uh, is there a way for us to go back and see if we can go gather them up? Give them a heads up of Sonny. He wants to talk to them. He says, uh, You know what? This is kind of boring. And Sonny goes, <laughs> and he yawns, and everybody uh, make a wisdom saving throw. Ooh, 25. Oh, really? Yeah, 18 plus 7. Oh, okay. Well, Churduvir falls asleep. Oh, I got 18. Okay. Yeah, you fall asleep also. And uh, Sonny take, lies down and takes a nap. <laughs> but <laughs> but, <laughs> but you, you, uh, you're still awake, Zoe. Well, uh. somebody, well... You could choose to fail if you want. 
could choose to choose what? You could choose to fail and just go to sleep too if you want. Well, I don't know this Sphinx. Um, yeah. And he's sleeping, but that doesn't mean he's going to stay asleep. He he, you know, I don't know his motivations. I'm not about to leave yeah. two of my teammates unconscious <laughs> on the ground. Uh, so I'm going to have to try to wake them up somehow. Yeah. Uh, he uh, uh, he he's got one eye open and he looks at you and he yawns again. Yeah, it's <laughs> not gonna work on me, buddy. I don't care if you're sunny. You're buddy to me. Yeah, make, um, make another uh, wisdom saving throw. Twenty-two. Yeah, you fail this time. Ah! <laughs> you fall asleep. Darn it! Yeah, Sunny's got plot armor. <laughs> Okay, so meanwhile, back at the uh, back at the at the house, um, uh, Musette and Richard make their way back into uh, they they're they're driving the car back, pull it into the garage and and uh, come back inside, and uh, Bentley says, "Hey, you're back. What what happened?" I don't know, man. That was crazy. Not what I was expecting. But uh, we're back now. Uh, it, so you, you, I don't think you were gone long enough to get to Darthur City, right? Oh, no way, man. We got about halfway there, and this huge gelatinous worm started trying to attack us from the sky. So uh, we tried to make a getaway. Fortunately, uh, it slashed through the roof of the car and got me in the arm. And, I mean, we're fine now, but, you know, truck could have uh, truck could seen some better days. A gelatinous worm? It was a dragon I mean, or something. It was crazy. Jeez. Okay. And and also at this time, uh, Jonathan, you make your way back. Back to the base. Uh, just like baseline investigation, I was going to sit over the entrance to the blacksmith and like use the tech thoughts. But I, and oh, okay. Whatever abilities I have, uh, but I'll just kind of roll that up into an investigation roll. Okay. Figure it out. Does that seem reasonable? Right. Yeah. Not my strong suit, though. 16. Okay. 16, and this is for detect thoughts uh, on the people or, that come in? I was just going to kind of use detect thoughts, yeah, on people that come in, okay. looking to see if there was any information about um, the bad, you know, fake badges being made or just yeah. in general kind of untoward things happening at the blacksmithing shop. It does definitely seem like people are buying like uh, forged things and and uh, stuff that's meant to to misidentify. You know, uh, people are you you. This, uh, sometimes you people are thinking like, man, this is really going to help me out. And oh god, I hope I don't get caught with this. And I wish I didn't have to do this kind of stuff. That's enough for me. I'll head back to Bentley's. Okay. You make it back right about the same time as as uh, as you see the car pulling in and it's got its roof torn off and the hood is torn off and there's kind of there's smoke coming out of the engine, but they didn't notice it back. any hail. <laughs> oh, no, <clears throat> no, there wasn't any hail. So uh, <laughs> something crazy must have happened. And uh, yeah, and and so you guys get inside and and uh, Bentley's asking about this this worm uh with with Richard. Yeah, and I'm or telling direct. you what, it was way slower moving than I thought. I mean, on foot it seemed like, "Oh my god, we can't escape." But as soon as we jumped in the truck and started putting some distance between us, it just didn't pursue us any longer. So, you know, I don't know. I just didn't want to go any further past it because like I said to uh Oh, girl, I've, I've never seen anything like that before in my life. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, I'm glad that you guys are safe. I'm a little bit I'm a little bit annoyed with you for leaving your teammates and taking the truck out and getting it messed up. But the express is still set up. You can still join them if you want. They're not back yet, by the way. It's been hours. So I kind of look over at the transport. I, you know, this thing's still on. Can we go find these guys? Yeah, yeah, you can. And and Musa, do you remember that you tried to contact uh, them and there was no response? 
Uh, I think Richard should take this over because my last decision uh, did not end very well. So I'm going to step back from decision making for at least a small amount of time. Well, we've been through some stuff already. I think you're going to come. I'm so with sorry. Me. I'm going to step on this pad. Are you going? Yeah, let's go. Let's jump and, and uh, jump on this thing. And, and Jonathan, you're you're going also. I will approach skeptically. <laughs> Is this the bird you were telling me about? All right. This is what hey, you guys get hey, for Jonathan. wandering off. This what? is Richard. <laughs> now you guys have met. Oh, yeah, yeah. You haven't met uh, Richard Smitty. So, Richard, you want to describe your character to uh, for Jonathan and vice versa? I'm an urban bounty hunter from the 5th. Uh, I got a bunch of tattoos. I think I'm cool. <laughs> uh, right. Some of my tattoos are magical. Uh, nothing really set in stone yet. Maybe just propensity to get magical tattoos in the future. But uh, wherever I got them in the past, it kind of seemed to work in the fifth. Kind of just if something's kind of a miss, I can kind of feel something's going down before it does. But I got a lot of a lot of underground contacts. At least in the fifth, I do. But I know how to network with people and try to figure things out, find out uh, exactly you know, any sort of information that uh, would be useful is kind of my bag. I can find missing people. But uh, I got a, an automatic pistol. Um, Ralph over there gave me this sword. And so, yeah, that's where I'm at with it right now. We just jumped in the truck, tried to go get some information on Darthur City. Right before we did that, these guys all jumped into this portal. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and yeah, we kind of got our asses kicked by some, like, flying, flying worm dragon. But uh, we're back now, and I just kind of want to regroup with everybody because I'm feeling a lot of my element. And uh, John, basically, just looks like a seagull disgorge a cigarette while giving you a side eye, and then use mage hand to like light it and just kind of and smoke it and look at you skeptically. Said, "Uh huh, this is why you guys need to bring flyers. Guess we should go." Bring flyers. Folks with flying abilities. Oh, I, I, thought, I was thinking like leaflets people. and stuff. Yeah, Who I was you thinking like people, <laughs> tracks and things. Yeah. Join Jericho Squad. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not what we're doing right now. <laughs> I guess it's dark in here again, right? Because as soon as uh, Zoe went to sleep, she lost concentration on the spell. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, you um, you wake up and something like twelve hours have gone by. Wow, that was a great nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is and, someone uh, gonna wake us up? <laughs> and Son Sonny wakes up too, and he he wakes you guys up. He says, oh, "It looks like it, it looks like your friends are here." Uh, he waves his hand, and all of these torches light up all around the cave, and so you can see now. Yay. I could see the dark. Yeah. Jonathan could see already. I don't need your human <laughs> human flashlights. Oh wait. That's not a flashlight, that's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah. so, okay, and, so and nobody it, is noticing the Sphinx in the room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you you I'm see your friends busy. lying down on the are just starting to get up. They've been lying down on the ground and yeah. uh, there's a giant a giant sphinx standing in front of them. Hi, everyone. Well, not giant compared to, like, the sphinx in Egypt, but it's pretty big. Hey, sorry we're late. Hi. This is... Say hi to our new friend. Oh, that thing's alive? Yeah, well... You... Hi, my, my name is Sun, Sun Mahava, but you can call me Sunny. That's what they call me around here. Hey there, Sunny. Hello. So what's going on here, guys? You mentioned uh, something about testing all of us. Yeah, you know, I, I was wondering if you guys are all fri friends or are you just like co-workers? Because no I've worries. waited a long time in here for you. We're like mild associates. Damn. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, now that I have you all together. Oh, yes, on to the riddle. If you're going to be fighting this thing, I think you have to understand it. So, tell me, 
Yeah, and I'm gonna give you ten minutes to answer this so you can talk amongst yourselves. But tell me the meaning of the hand, the wings, and the heart. I know telling me giving you a riddle is really stereotypical, isn't it? Well, I mean, literally, I'd say it's your this job. play gonna still wander off because of the cliche dimension. <laughs> Why don't you just tell us? <laughs> well, because it's a test. What do we get if we pass this test? test? We get to keep our life. If you pass this test, you go on to the second part of the test. Oh, hooray! It's a two-part test, eh? The meaning right. of what's the riddle again? Have bad short-term memory. The hand, the wings, and the heart. And, and yeah, this uh, might not be the crew for riddles. To be <laughs> yeah. Zoe and and uh, Ralph, you both saw images of of uh, symbols of a hand, wings, and a heart uh, earlier today. That kind of drew you to uh, to come here. So it it does feel like that that's something important. Yeah. Well, if we were wise, we'd see a trend. I. Well, the only thing I can think of that has a hand, wings, and heart in my experience is Maat when you test your heart after you die, because she has wings and she puts your heart on a scale. Mm. The bird has wings. Does he? Hi, bird. Bird is also also has no patience for riddles and a very low wisdom. <laughs> uh, he's out. So I said, I, I'm not sure this is the crew for for riddles. Can I make camera, a, like, no a wisdom check to see if I know the answer inherently? Yeah, yeah. Can my characters be wiser than I am? <laughs> <laughs> you can. Yeah. If you got anybody wants to do that, you can do that. Yeah, I don't think. I, I guess I could try. Do, what are we doing now? Wisdom checks. Holy cow. Oh, wow. I... No, I have a plus zero. Jonathan Thanks. got a 15. Uh, Sturduvir got oh, a 10. Plus zero. Yeah. Sturduvir says, I really have no idea. I got a oh. four. I got a six. Yeah, that didn't happen. Oh. I, some, I got a 21. 21? Okay. Yeah. So with a 21, um, oh, yay. you think about... Get a hand. Sometimes a god can be tripartite. Sounds kinky. Yeah. Father, the son of the holy French fry. It blows smoke out of my nostrils. Yeah. I don't know. You can. Your heart beats. You can beat your wings. And you can beat your fists. And you're trying to beat this riddle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Richard just steps back, lights up a cigarette. I, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. It's quiet. I'm gonna use minor illusion to start the opening bars of Michael Jackson's "Beat It." <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. I, <laughs> I can't believe that's not it. How many lifelines do we get, Sonny? <laughs> All your like friends are friend. here. <laughs> or I guess coworkers. All your coworkers are here. I just met these people. Well, you call them people. <laughs> Folks. Yeah, I thought beating. How, how could beating not be the answer? <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys haven't officially told him what your, uh, oh, what your oh, response okay. is yet. You, no. you got to you gotta debate it amongst yourselves. You're still and then, debating. And then yeah. tell him. Yeah. Well, I mean, beating does sound like a pretty reasonable answer. Does anyone got anything else? I'll take a drag from the cigarette. With, yeah, with the invisible hand, it's like, well, if that's not the answer. We could always just beat it out of him. <laughs> sure, yeah, says, home. if only I researched something besides fixing the door at the library. <laughs> yeah, what about so joke harsh. books, man? And we Google. <laughs> <laughs> I just Googled it. <laughs> Rob just pointed out that Richard looks like he's pointing a gun at Musette. Uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> Depending on how long this takes, I might ask him to shoot, shoot. So, oh. how can I not do anything with my liar? Uh, what I do you want to do? For this. Okay. I don't see anything. <laughs> you could set set everybody on fire. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, like I can cast bardic inspiration, but I don't think that's really going to help anybody right now. So, That's so exactly it, it could be mean. used for a wisdom check. Oh yeah. Okay, so who's got the highest wisdom? 
probably Zoe is the highest wisdom out of this group. Really? <laughs> yeah. What's your wisdom? Um, eighteen. It's wisdom yeah. plus four and total eighteen. Yeah, that's definitely higher than everybody else. Just love. Okay, cool. So <laughs> let me go ahead and uh, we'll cast. Bar- we'll uh, send bardic inspiration over to Zoe, so she gets an inspiration die of a one d eight. And I'm gonna go perch on her shoulder and lead my hand and, and try to help her come okay. up with the answers. All right, so um, oh. so roll uh, with advantage. So you roll twice and take the higher number and add your, is it a D8? It's a D8. Yeah, and add a D8 to the highest one. Okay, so uh, Zoe, what did you, with all of that, rolling twice and taking you, the You guys number, are going a million miles an hour. What am I rolling? <laughs> you're rolling? You're rolling a wisdom check. Wisdom check, okay. You roll twice and take the higher number, and you add a D8 to the number because... Oh, I got a natural 20 on the first one. Oh, you don't don't need to roll the second one, then. You're not going to beat that. Look at how it goes. And then 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 with my plus four. And then um, add a D8 to that. Okay. Oh, you you did, right? Well, it says 20 plus four equals 24. Yeah, plus a D8 on top of that. On D8, I got a two, so it's 26. Okay, 26, wow, yeah. So with Jonathan whispering in your ears and he said this crazy thing earlier about the father and the son and the holy french fries, and you think, (laughs) you know, actually, wait a minute. It totally makes sense. I mean, not the french fries part, but the holy trinity. You've got the father and the son and the holy ghost. Uh, The son might be the hands. Right, the sun works in the natural world. The wings are would be like the Holy Spirit, amorphous sort of a thing that inspires the people. The heart is the uh, the people themselves, or the Father, and belief. Okay. Mm. Is this what we're going with? Okay. <laughs> no one else has a better answer, so. Sounds, re- sounds reasonable to me, and like something I okay. once heard on the San Francisco boardwalk. <laughs> All right. You hear a lot there. <sighs> you guys wouldn't know. Oh, only you fifthers would know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so you pass that along to Sonny? Sure. All right. <laughs> I can't come up with a better idea, so okay. <laughs> he says, Yes, actually, that's that's pretty good. This, this creature you're facing. You have to understand that you've actually seen two parts of it already. You've, you've met the hand of the unbeheld. Two of you have just recently faced the wings of Hapeximendios, and you've not yet seen the heart of the Aboriginal. He says, okay, well. Who's ready for part two? And he points at uh, Chirdovir, and, he's, and he uh, casts banishment. Okay. Uh, what? What? He just banished her to the ear. Why? <laughs> no. No. We lost <laughs> our librarian. He reads for me. Why did you banish our coworker? <laughs> okay. Yeah, Trudovir is gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All right, and roll initiative, everybody. Twenty-two. Got a six. Got a twelve. I want to real dice. 22. 16. 12. 17. Just banished Chertovir, and he looks like he's getting ready to attack the rest of you. And Musette, you're first. Oh, uh, I don't like being first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gonna move for sure. So one, one, two, three, so we can fan out more. And then fairly close to him, so I guess I'll just go ahead and uh, attack him with the dagger. And bardic okay. inspiration is always a good idea. Okay. It's well, I mean, I only confusing. have two left, although I guess it doesn't really matter. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, if you want to attack you. him with the dagger, you'll have to get like one more space closer. I mean, does Zoe? Does Zoe still has it, right? For a few, for for a little bit longer. Uh, no, she used she it. It's like it's used it. You, yeah. she used oh, because it's only the once, right? Because it's only the once. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I guess we'll go ahead and we'll send one to uh, Richard 
and then oh well yeah one to uh one to uh richard and one to um jonathan so jonathan and then richard i guess okay and that spaces it out too and then you said i gotta get one closer to stabby stab are you just you're trying to move forward one diagonal yeah there? thank you oh okay like that am i close enough now well i can see my yeah. little oh, yeah you sorry. are Okay, so uh, then we'll just attack him with the dagger. Uh, okay, 15 then? Uh, 15 misses. Okay. <laughs> so now it's Jonathan's. Oh, cast uh, Hound of Yellow Men. And my <laughs> okay. Shadow Dog right there. Bonus action. Okay. And then cast Char Monster on this guy. So it's All a right. DC 15 Wisdom Saving Throw with disadvantage now. Because of the Hound? Yup. So I guess he he passed. That's disconcerting. And Take so he's gonna be next. One hop okay. back. To... Okay. And and Rob, you saw where the hound was. Get ready to get out of here quickly. Behind him. Yeah, because I've been trying to give flanking to whoever. There we go. The, the chunkier members of the party. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm frail and bird bone. All right, I got thick skin. And a rock hand. So Zoe's up next. Okay, what I want to do is uh, Guardian of Faith. I'm going to okay. put him right there in front of the Sphinx. All right, well, the damage on that was 20. What's the saving throw on that? 15. Nine. So he failed, and he takes 20 damage. <laughs> Woohoo! And now it's his turn. So he starts out his turn by doing a roar. <laughs> Everybody make a uh, make a wisdom saving throw. Thirteen for me, is that a- anything Twenty-two. Below, anything below a, a, an eighteen fails. Okay. I failed. I failed. Okay, so yeah, my Zoe, dice failed. So Zoe is not afraid, but everybody else is afraid. But, uh, but I got a twenty-two. Ralph got oh, a twenty-two. Okay. Ralph got a twenty-two, and I thought Zoe did too, right? I got a twenty-two also. So Ralph and Zoe are not afraid, and everybody else is. Shaking in my boots. So, yeah, basically what that means <laughs> is uh, on your turn, you can't get any closer. No. The people that are afraid can't get closer? Yeah. But okay. you can also save again at the end of your next turn to try to not be afraid again. I do have a spell that um, will break you know, like some kind of a spell that goes on one of my teammates. Would that work on his roar? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have disadvantage on attacks and ability checks. Okay. And you can't move closer to it. Brent, you you failed too, right? Okay. Yep, both, both me and the hound. All right. Yep, that's it. So that was uh, that's he does that, and he is going to attack Zoe with a claw attack. Uh, he got an 18 to hit. I think that hits, right? Yeah. Uh, armor class is 14. Yeah. 24 damage. Okay. And he'll do his other attack on Musette. That's also 18. <laughs> Yeah, that hits. And 16 damage. Okay, and that's the end of his turn. And it is Richard, and Ralph will be next after Richard. And so, Richard, you're afraid, so your attacks and ability checks are going to be at disadvantage. So you roll twice and take the lower number. All right, yeah, so we, the gun naturally just comes to my hand because the uh, situation past but uh i'm a little freaked out by all these uh huge creatures i've been running into over here so like yeah, <laughs> yeah. i pull my pistol and uh just start spraying so okay uh yep roll roll to hit 24 automatic okay and then you have to roll twice to take the lower number probably a two. Oh, 23 It says action tax per action two. Yeah. Okay. So that's so you hit on one of them. You can go ahead and roll damage, and then you can do you can attack again if you want to. Pew. 
piercing. Eight. Oof. And I'll shoot again. Because like I said, I just start unloading. Uh, eight. But it's a disadvantage, so I roll twice. Well, that one would Or is that so already? You yeah, you don't have to. Yeah. Okay. Do uh, you, you want to do anything with your bonus action, or is that is that it, it for or in movement, or is that it for Richard? That's it, for Richard. Okay. All right, Ralph. Uh, Ralph wants to use a cantrip of infestation. Okay. What's the um, the saving throw for that? I think it's is that a saving throw or an attack roll? Target must succeed on a Constitution saving throw, or it takes one d6 poison damage and moves five feet in a random direction. Okay. What and I got to roll a d4 for that there? direction. Okay. And what's the saving throw? You said Constitution. What's the number? Thirteen. Uh, he got exactly a thirteen, so he passed. Oh. Does he take half damage on a on a um, a passed save? It does not look like it. Okay. Well, All right. damn it. <laughs> um, so we're at the top of the round, and he is going to do legendary actions. He's going to do flame strike. Hey, everybody make a dexterity saving throw. Muzak got 23. Alpha got 23. Hey, wow. Ralph got 21. Richard got a six. Uh, I got 17. You had to beat an 18. No, I didn't. It's 13 damage to everybody who failed, and it, and it's uh, six if you passed. Six damage if you passed? Yeah. Somebody's going to have to get me some hit points. I'm down to four. Oh, it's a 10-foot radius and a 40-foot high cylinder. So actually... It's not going to affect everybody. Eat it, human. Yeah. <laughs> so who's it affect? Everybody but me. <laughs> uh, Outside of the radius. Oh. Yeah, he's he's centering it in the space that's that's below the guardian of faith. Gotcha. So that it'll yeah, so that it'll get everybody except for Jonathan. <laughs> and then it will be Musette's turn again. Okay. Well, I was going to class cow cloud of daggers, but I should probably oh. cast a healing word over to Zoe. Thank you. She's about to pass <laughs> out. Um, okay, so we're gonna cast a healing word over to Zoe. And it says uh, regain three D four plus three hit points. Okay. So yeah, go ahead and roll that. Okay, two plus four is six, plus three is nine, plus one is ten, plus another three, thirteen. Right. Okay. Thirteen. Okay. So thirteen, Zoe, you get thirteen back. All right. And then Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. And then I'm gonna uh, just try to shoot him. Um, we're still rolling. Am I still rolling with disadvantage? No. Right? Yes. Uh. It, yes. If you're doing flanking, shouldn't that counter out? Oh, you're right. Yep, because you're flanking with the Hound of Ill Omen. Ha ha. Uh, yeah. So you so you just make a regular just roll. Normal. Yeah. Okay. It would, cool. You would Thank normally you. have advantage, but they're canceling each other out because you're also afraid. Okay. Uh, sixteen is what I got. Uh, that misses. Then it's Jonathan's turn. All right. So I have a technical question. Okay. We're frightened and flanking, so those two can cancel out. But then the Hound of Illoman also has pack tactics, so it has advantage yeah. on attack rolls against the creature. At least one of the wolf's allies is within five feet yeah. of the creature and isn't incapacitated. So that, that continue through and give it advantage? Uh, no, they don't stack. Okay. And I assume he misses with a 10. Yeah. So that's the Hound's turn. Yep, and then Jonathan's going to see if I can get the portal activated. Oh, uh, Musette, you can roll. I'm sorry, you can roll one more time. Bye. Uh, I'm sorry, you can roll a wisdom saving throw one more time to, at the end of oh. your turn to, to, to take away the fear. 
Oops, sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> nine. Okay. Um, yeah, 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 plus zero. Oh, that fuck. didn't make it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so, Jonathan, you're going to try to get the portal activated? Yeah. That'll take uh, several minutes of sliding tiles around if you can remember the right coordinates. And the other end has to be on receive mode. So well, I would hope we left it on receive mode. I don't really uh, want to walk from the, here. the tiles have to be rearranged to come back. So you're hoping that Bentley, you know, has had put enough the time back. to, <laughs> yeah, to put it back. Yeah, we're just stuck here for the rest of the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get to the surface so I get self over Well, so you guys, you guys have only <laughs> you've only been here like most of you have only been here like ten minutes. Yeah, we've only been here. Geez. Yeah. Um. The other, the others have been here for uh, twelve hours and ten minutes. All right, I'll use two sorcery points to center darkness, cast darkness, and center it here. Okay. So it's just incorporating it and the hound. Okay. Just a radius of magical darkness that okay. even dark vision cannot see through unless you have um, what is it, devil true sight? sight? True sight. And Devil's Sight will do it, like if you're certain kinds of sorcerer or demon yeah. or something. Yeah, something like that. That that was my intention. Okay. Right there. All right. And then let me roll my D8 for my saving throw. Yeah. D8. I'm using my Bardic Inspiration. It's the D8, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I get it. That wasn't helpful. Um, I'm not, yeah, I'm still frightened. Okay. That was a huge waste. Oh, and man. It's, now it's Zoe's turn. All right, so, since I'm not afraid, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. Which, of course, will be like my, like an Ankh swordy thingy. I got a 19, does that hit? Yeah. Okay, and damage eight. Okay. And where are you putting the spiritual weapon? Well, it's a melee attack, so let's go ahead and put it as you're looking at the screen, I guess, over his left shoulder. Okay. Yeah. And um, your statue, I think, your, or your guardian of faith gets one more uh, attack, right? So as soon as it's his turn, he'll take that damage again then. He is going to do his second roar. Make another uh, wisdom saving throw. All of us? Yeah, yeah. of course. 17. 18. Okay, anything 18 or higher passes. <sighs> Ralph got 25. <laughs> wow, okay. So anybody who um, who failed is um, now frightened and deafened. And what? And deafened. Uh, <laughs> deafened. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I failed. failed. Yeah. Richard Smitty. So was there any damage for that? Uh, no, that's just the condition. But now he's going to attack again. And I think he's going to do one claw attack against the hound because this thing is attacking him from behind. He's going to turn around and whack! Blindly, in the dark. He can see. Oh, he's got uh, devil sight? Or true sight. 21 to hit. That hit? Uh, 17 damage. Oh, he took 20 damage from the statue at the start of his turn. He is going to attack Musette. 24 to hit. Oh, yeah, that definitely hits. 20 damage. Jesus. Okay, I'll do a healing spell on you next time. Thanks. Okay, okay and uh, Richard is next. All right, so now that I'm deaf, what's that mean? You can't hear and automatically fail ability checks that require hearing. Okay. What are you going to do? 
Well, what's the what's the scale on these squares? By um, this a square is it's a five foot square. Five foot square. Okay. Yeah. All so right. whenever you're moving, you're moving five feet. Well, I'm gonna move my guy over to the side. Action. Well, you know what? <laughs> Just gonna attack. Okay. Where I'm at's not too bad. I can't advance forward, so I can't use any of my uh, melee weapons. They have to be within five feet. I guess yeah. one tile next to him. But you can fire your gun. <clears throat> but I can fire my gun because I got 50. So yeah, I'll do yeah. that again. And I'm still at disadvantage, so I'll roll twice. Oh, and Brent, well, did, the, did the hound get taken out by that attack, or is it still up? No, it's still up. Okay. Got 42 hit points. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, I used to think it was dumb. It's not dumb. <laughs> <laughs> So I got Couldn't you stand there though? Because this is incorporeal. What's that? Or not real? The statue? Does that actually block the square? No, it doesn't. He can shoot through that. Yeah. Oh no, I meant he could step up there. If oh, oh yeah. Well, he he can't though because he's frightened, so he can't get any. Clothes. Oh yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Just, um. So you said thir right now. thirteen to hit. Yes. You don't have disadvantage because uh, you're being you're flanking with the hound. Oh, so, well, and I had twenty one to hit. That hits. Oof. Okay, roll your damage. Twelve. Twelve damage. Okay. So I am not at a disadvantage. I'm gonna roll this again for my second. Okay. Oh. Twelve to hit. All right, so I missed. Yeah. You distracted him, him enough that you broke concentration on his uh, banishment spell. So, Trudovir comes back, yeah. Oh. <clears throat> what? Crazy. I think everybody else is dead after I've been blasting this guy. Yeah, but, uh, but Richard Smitty yeah. is standing <laughs> on the spot where Trudovir was, so he fuses with you and you're both dead. No, I'm just kidding. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> like wah, like wah, the transporter wah. accidents on Star Trek. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just start growing into each other like a fly. What so, came back didn't survive very long, fortunately. Yeah, so Trigovir says, "What's going on? Why am I here?" Okay, can I roll to get this scared stuff off of me? Yes, at the yeah, it's at the end of your turn, you can uh, make a wisdom saving throw. Oh come on, what do I got to get? Eighteen. Oh come on, here it goes. Yes. No All right, you you're, you're, or Daffin, you you got rid of both of those. Yeah, well, short of you showed up. I was like, I forgot about being scared. Shot yeah. that guy a couple times. I'm feeling good <laughs> now. Now I have to play short over here. I was hoping that would last for the whole thing. I want to look Richard's over turn, as a reaction to Chodavir and say, see, I told you the answer was beating it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the end of Richard's turn. And it's Ralph. All right. Yeah, that's in my turn. Okay. I'm going to come up one right up here. Okay, and I want to use uh, Calm Emotions on my team. Okay. And uh, each humanoid in a 20 foot radius sphere centered on a point you choose within range must make a charisma saving throw. The creature can choose to fail the saving throw if it wishes. If the creature fail, uh, fails its saving throw, choose one of the following two effects. So I could suppress any effect causing a target to be charmed or frightened. Oh, uh, wow. When a spell yeah, ends. That's cool. I've never heard of that used in that way. That's awesome. Uh, when this yeah, you guys can just choose to fail and you automatically lose your frightened condition. So, yeah. Go, yeah. everyone. All right. <laughs> so we all go and then choose to fail? <laughs> yeah, so um, that I don't will... have a condition anymore, though. Well, yeah, the, but... the bird does. <laughs> and Musette does. Well, what's the range on it? 20 feet. 20 feet. Yeah, yeah it's oh, 20 okay. foot radius, so it should hit everybody. Yeah, so, so Musette and Jonathan are no longer afraid anymore. And same with Richard. The hound still is, though. It's right at 20 feet. All right. So, so yeah. You. Yeah, go ahead. He can he can not be afraid. Yeah. And then All right. 
Well, then I'm just going to use Hungry Jaws on this guy. Yeah, you have to be, you have to be within, you're biting him, so you'd have to be within five feet of him. I'm too far, aren't I? Yeah. But you, you've got lots of movement. If you want to move up there and bite him, you can. Ah! Come here. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to bite him. Okay. And uh, you can make a bite <laughs> attack. If it hits, you gain two temporary hit points. All right. Uh, roll the hit. Where's my dice? Eight. Eight. That misses. Uh, Damn. Missed. Well, I tried, guys. But at you least bit, you're not scared of it anymore. You bit into a bunch of uh, stony sort of feathers. Gross. Okay, it's the top of the round, and he gets legendary action again. Yeah, he'll do flame strike again. <laughs> Centered on that same spot behind the, the Guardian of Faith. Okay, so everybody make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, Lord. Three. Oh, you got to beat an 18. <laughs> yeah, 23. I got a 17. Okay. So if you, it sounds like only Musette passed. Well, I'm, I'm at a radius, right? Can beat. Yeah, you are. Okay. Being a coward is helpful. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me, I swear I was frightened. It was magic. <laughs> it was not my plan from the start. He failed. Okay, so everybody except for Musette takes uh, 13 damage. Oh, Lord, I'm back down to four. Oh, uh, Musette takes six. Uh-oh. Okay. I will get out of the blast room. Wow, you guys are looking rough. It's pretty bad, yeah. Has Ralph taken any damage at all yet? I've been taking damage. Okay, yeah, I see it. 44 out of 63. Yeah. <laughs> Musette is at one hit point. Yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah, I don't think I can even do anything, right? Well, it's your turn now. But I mean, like, can I still, you know, do my spells and stuff? Or, oh, I mean, yeah. I don't... Yep, you can do anything. I would r recommend, like, running far away and doing long distance stuff. Okay, I will take that recommendation. Sorry. Are we officially on my turn? You didn't say. It, yeah, you are. It's uh, okay. Musette, and then Chernobyl will be next. Okay, so I'm going to one, two, three. Shit. I'm gonna come back here. Okay. So, you know, I can do a bonus action first. I did that last time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can do either in, in either order. Okay, and it doesn't say I can't do healing word on myself. It says a creature of your choice that you can see within range. Yes. Totally so that means can. yeah. I'm just you gonna also um, do cure wounds on yourself is is a little higher. Mm. But that takes your action. Yeah, I'd rather have an action, too. Thank you, though. Okay. I know that for next time, if I remember. The if I remember part is important, because I probably won't. Okay. Uh, sorry, so we're going to go ahead and do uh, cast healing word, and that is 1d4 plus 3. Okay. 4. four. Okay, so I'm going to get 7 back. And you're deaf. So you kind of are hearing in your, like inside of your skull, you're hearing your talk, yourself talk. But it works. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, 60 feet. I'm within 60 feet, right? One, two, yeah, three. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, totally. Definitely. Okay. Uh, and then I will yeah, finally. Okay, I will finally cast Cloud of Daggers. Okay. Uh, like centered right in the middle of of uh, Sunny. Uh, yeah. Let's go a little bit towards the back because I don't want to injure Ralph. Okay. If you injure me, that might help my next move. Sorry, I'm just saying. Okay, so we just cast that, <laughs> and then it says. Uh. Do I have to do anything specific for that? Oh, Cloud of Daggers? No, I think yeah. it just automatically works. It's okay. A spell. Okay, yep. then 4d4. Yep. It's 4d4 damage. 
Uh, oh yeah, here it is. Uh, 44 slashing damage when it enters the spell's area for the first time or on a turn or starts its turn there. Okay. And it's going to so be closer to of... his tail. Yeah, yeah. A cloud of daggers closer to the Sphinx's tail. Okay. What did I say it was? 44? Yeah. Yeah. So 4 plus 3 is 7 plus 2 is 9 plus 3 is 12. 12. Okay. Oof. And right there. Yeah, oh, yep, Rob's got it. That's okay. exactly what There it is. Ooh. Okay, that's that's the Cloud of Daggers. Chertovir's turn. And he is going to cast Earth and Grasp. So it's a strength 14 save. He failed. All right, so Chertovir says, take this. And uh, a big, uh, big stone uh, hand comes up out of the ground. And grabs him and starts squeezing. And it does 2d6 damage. And it's holding him. Uh, so 5 damage. And it's holding him in place. And it's his turn, so now that uh, also the um, the Guardian of Faith is going to do another 20. And then it disappears. So now he's being held in place in the Cloud of Daggers. And he can't, he can only reach, as far as like attacks, he can only reach Zoe and the Hound. And Ralph, right? Oh, and Ralph, right, yeah. It's so chaotic, it's hard to see. Oh, that's right. Okay, um, and now it's Jonathan's turn. All right, I'm gonna hide. And then I'll disengage as an action. Okay. And then or just keep moving action? past him. What's that? Is that a bonus action to disengage? No, it's a full action. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I can't move past him? Uh, there's a gate behind him. Oh, shit. Well, yeah. can my little bird body squeeze through the gate? Or is it like bars? Like iron bars? It, it is like, yeah. Uh, make, um... Dexterity, athletics. Which is just yeah. dexterity for me. Yeah, maybe make an acrobatics check. Okay, it's still just dexterity. Yeah. Ooh. If if <laughs> acrobatics doesn't add anything. No. Um, sixteen. Yeah, uh, you're able to squeeze through the bars. <laughs> All right, so I got fifteen movement left. <laughs> okay. Maybe there's a maybe there's a magic sword back here or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> One. Two, three. Okay, um, you get back there and you see a bunch of surprised individuals. Uh, they look like various types of monsters. Uh, oh, you see okay. one, one with like tentacles coming out of his head, and you see a, a woman that looks sort of like a porcupine. Uh, you see a woman wearing a, uh, wearing sort of robes. You see a, a sort Hello, of a fellow di- monstrosities. <laughs> you see sort of a. a, a a ditch carved out of the stone uh, in the shape of a humanoid creature, but it's huge, like 12 feet tall. And you see body parts laid into the, the different parts of the of the shape. So like they're putting this this uh, this creature together like a puzzle. And it's missing a right hand. Uh, they look surprised I- to see you. I would assume so. Probably not as surprised as I am. Um, can you do like an arcana check to see if, like, how this, uh, how far they are away from summoning and or, or what they need to continue to do? Just at uh, a glance. An arcana check? Well, I'm assuming um, it's a magical thing. And if yeah, it's not, I guess y- I'll. Yeah. Y- it. Y- you can, yeah, go ahead. Six. <laughs> so <Okay. never> mind. <laughs> it it kind of looks like they're waiting for something, but you don't really know what they're waiting for. Probably not a seagull. <laughs> yeah, probably not a seagull. And then the hound, that's right, um, will attack and not hit. Okay. All right. Now it's Zoe's turn. Okay. You are hurt really bad. 
Yeah, and uh, pretty much everybody except for Jonathan is within the Mass Healing Word uh, area. So I'm going to go ahead and do Mass Healing Word. Uh, that okay. way I get my, and it's up to six people of my choosing. So I, I guess uh, with, with Musette and myself, definitely. How are you doing, Ralph? Uh, okay. Okay. I'm good. All right. And you, you good too? Okay. So it'll just be the two of us then. I want some health. Oh, you don't, you don't want more health? You don't want more points back? I've only got 20 I mean, no, I don't back. actually. You don't need any points back. Okay. Well, whoever needs it, you're going to get this. So there you go. How that? All right, so. Oh. Right, and then the effect. 12. Oh, wow. 12. 12. 12. It's so cool. Thanks, Zoe. A spiritual weapon. 11 to hit, no. For the record, I was, was still deaf, but made my saving throw, and the dog did not, so it's still good. Oh, okay. I thought it was just frightened. Cause I was both. Yeah, yeah, because he, he used calm emotions, so he can't calm the deafness out of you. Well, well. <laughs> in my saving throw. The the not married. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, your saving throw can remove the deafness. I thought I removed it when I did my saving throw. Um, it did. You, you yeah. Can... Yes. I thought I remembered that. Yeah. And now it's his turn. He's going to do his third roar. So everybody make a uh, constitution saving throw. Gosh darn it. I rolled a one. <laughs> okay. Plus seven. I got an eight. Come on. <laughs> Seventeen. Seven. Seven. I got a ten. Ralph got a 21. Okay, I got a 7. And... 21. So, I got a 21, dog got a 17. Okay, so you, if you if you pass, you'll get a... You'll take half damage, but it's 18. Rob, I made my deafened throw, so... Jonathan Proper is no longer deafened. Fifty-four damage. If you what? Fifty-four. Yeah. Fifty-four. Yeah. yeah, it's thunder damage. He roars well, I'm super dead. loud and hurts I'm dead. everybody. Well, yep, I'm out. Not, you're unconscious. You're not dead. Hound is gone. I'll just go ahead and wipe <laughs> out all my points. <laughs> yeah, I just I did it. Put fifty-four. I said failure, success, and gives me death save. <clears throat> Where is Ralph at? I'm right here underneath the guy's throat. Chertovir <laughs> failed. So Trigovir is out. Okay, well I would like to do Vampiric Touch. Ralph would like to do Vampiric Touch on the Sphinx. Okay, hold on. Tuck it right out of him. So yeah. next is Richard's turn, so make a, a death saving throw. So just roll a, a 20 sided die and if you get a 10 or higher, it's a pass. Okay, that's a failure. All right, and now it's Ralph's turn. All right. Uh, vampiric touch, touch of your shadow withered hand can siphon life force from others to heal your wounds. Make a melee spell attack against a creature within your reach. When uh, on a hit, the target takes 3d6 necrotic damage and you regain hit points equal to half the amount of necrotic damage dealt until the spell ends. You can make the attack again on each of your turns as an action. So you're doing vampiric touch. So you have to roll to hit, I think, to, to hit him, right? Yeah. Okay. Roll an 11. Oh, and I got hurt and failed my uh, concentration check, so the darkness is gone. Oh, okay. 16. Um, that misses. Fucking sh- <laughs> Yeah. Well. All right, so everybody is down except for Ralph and uh, Jonathan, right? Yes. Okay, so next is uh, Musette's turn. And the cloud of daggers is gone. Uh, you just have, oh. and uh, so all you can do is a death saving throw right now. So roll a ten sided die. A ten? Yeah. Or, sorry, a twenty sided die. And okay, you, you, but we have to roll above ten, right? You have to get a ten or higher. Okay. So it's a 13. little bit in your favor. 13. Okay, so that that's a pass. Okay. 
And Richard Ovier, I will roll his. He got a nine, so he failed. Jonathan's turn. Jonathan or, hasn't taken any damage this whole time. Yeah, I have. I took uh, the last roar. I took damage. <laughs> okay. So what are you going to do? And Zoe will be up next. Yeah. If the first thing is like take a quick look around. Um, I do have 120 foot magical dark vision. Yeah. And so I don't know if we can change that. Is there like a door or an exit? Uh, well, you see, it seems like there's a long series of tunnels that go on beyond, uh, even down further from where you're at. But they go they go downward okay. in, into the ground. And then this gate, does it look like the Sphinx can fit through? Uh, he, oh, is yeah. It... He, he, he can fit through if it's open. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but he can do it. And so there's snakes. no entrance up here either. It's teleporter only. What's that? In this branch. It's teleporter only out in this branch. Uh, down yeah, in, it down is. Down in here, yep. there was no. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's Ooh. just. It's hard to see, but that's just like a, a circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a dead. It's like a cul-de-sac, I guess. Well, guys, it was fun. <laughs> 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 this is definitely how I did not want to go underground. Not even in the sky. Or near the ocean. <laughs> just want to get and follow these guys to where there's no sky. I guess I'll just zap him with a upcast chromatic orb. Okay. At third level. Yeah. Twenty. And that hits. Thirty-one. Acid 30. damage. Okay, that's really good. You 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 really burn him. He's like. <laughs> So you're in range behind him somewhere? Or are you like casting through the bars? No, it's a small orb. I can just shoot it through. Okay. How far away are you in the back? Because it's hard. We can't. Really it's see. got a range of 120 feet. So <laughs> you're you're pretty far back. Yeah. No, okay. I'm just five, ten, fifteen, twenty feet back. And, and you notice all the other uh, the other creatures that are are looking at you. They're just kind of standing there watching you, sort of quizzically, but they're not uh, they're not doing anything. They're What's the ceiling height? You. Uh, about fifteen feet. Okay, I want to hug the ceiling out of their reach. Okay. Okay. All right. That, and I think that that's about it. Okay. No bonus action stuff. No, I don't think so. Okay. Not so now. Let's turn. Make a death saving throw. Come on, Mama needs a new pair of shoes. Twelve. Okay, that's a that's a pass. He says, "Okay, well, you got me good. Do you give up, or do you want to continue?" And he's talking to Ralph and and uh, Jonathan. Ha <laughs> ah. <laughs> What does give up entail? We'll stop this. Well, you started it. Yeah, it was a test. Do you want? Do you give up or not? Or do you want to continue? Oh. I How think we pass a test. You. Our bird is in there. So I'll take that as a no. And he's going to oh. attack you. God damn it. Nah, uh, fuck this guy. I didn't agree to any test, especially one that kills people. I didn't agree either. Okay, 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 okay. Calm down. Calm down. So he's swinging at you, but he stops in midair. It's like. Yes. Okay. Okay, so, uh. I. I I think for the benefit of everyone here, I think it'd probably be best to, uh, you know, weigh our options. So I guess we'll, uh, let's call it. <laughs> yeah, you need All to right. stand down or I just start dissolving body parts off this, whatever it is you're assembling. Oh, there you go. I mean, listen to the bird. When you hear that, Ralph, the, the hand squeezes you really hard. Mm. Stop it. He's going to cast Mass Healing Word on everybody that's unconscious. And actually, everybody that's around that's within range. So I don't know, Jonathan, if you're in range or not. Yeah, well, screw you too. What? <laughs> I just... The don't Sphinx, not you. The bird. The Sphinx, I'm just not asking you. you if you're in range. Are, are you there or not? Uh, depending on what the radius of healing word is. I'm 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 feet from him. Okay. 
Let's see. I don't need a stink of healing. I don't like this guy. 60 feet. So you don't want it? I mean, I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. I'm not happy about it. Everybody <laughs> gets uh, 11 points back. And so My feathers everyone are ruffled. Who, everyone who was unconscious is back up again. All right. All right. Thank you. Is well, you failed the, the second test, but you passed the first one. It seems like you need our help. He says, And by the way, uh, squeezing through the gate was not part of the test, Ralph. That doesn't mean that he passed. And <laughs> he, he uh, opens the gate. I did pass the gate. I feel like that should count for something. I think uh, so too. Okay. And I'll land it, it, in like it, roughly waddle, seagull waddle. It, it counts for you being small. The disgorgeous cigarette starts smoking and pacing and muttering to myself. He says, uh, please proceed. And so you can walk through the through the gates. All right, everyone. Let's go. We Richard looks like the kind of guy that's got some extra grenades. He, he might. He's got some handcuffs. Uh, you, you walk in and you see uh, Ralph, you recognize them from your early childhood memories. This is the night breed. Like I described earlier, you know, the, there's there's a bunch of them, a whole bunch of them, different, all different shapes and sizes. You see Baphomet laid out on uh, on the ground and he's got all of his parts except for the hand and the hand sort of disengages from you and uh, drops on the ground. Mm. My back feels lighter now. Where are you going, buddy? As my hand crawls away. No, it's just sitting there. <laughs> it's waiting uh. for somebody to put it on the in the space. Uh, like, as I'm smoking this cigarette, you guys need a hand? Uh, too bad, because I don't have any. So I well, I guess... Just blow smoke at him. I guess I just... Ralph kind of sit, you know, looks at everyone and puzzled. He kind of puts, uh, puts it together in his head. And uh, he picks up the, the stone hand that he's been attached to this whole time. And, uh, you know... Just sees if the puzzle fits, so, and he sets okay. it. Where it looks like it goes. Yeah, and it's it's the right hand, uh, and it's the you you set it in there and put it put it in its space. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination shop is dedicated to benefiting the arts and medicine program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. Over 50% of the proceeds go to the Texas Children's Cancer Center, where artist Don Bertram volunteers monthly. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and celebrates and continues to be inspired by his art. He uses that inspiration to help kids through the Texas Children's Cancer Center, and we couldn't be more thrilled to continue to work with him. There's a news feature video that shows Don working with the kids at Texas Children's Cancer Center and his artwork. Click the side banner at www.clivebarkercast.com to find links to the video and his Etsy shop where you can buy his prints, books, and support this wonderful program. Humanoid character artwork for Musette, Chertovir, Zoe, and Ralph by Asia Yordanova. She also created the Unbeheld in the opening title sequence. Jonathan Livingston Seagull artwork by Shayla Sackinger of Bird Ninja Art. Map of the Reconciled Dominions and Exorderex by Marco Staines at Mark Stain Art. Jericho Squad intro composition Cradle of Jersemet provided by friend of the show Ben Warren. Additional in-game music by Tabletop Audio. Bentley Widget here, smashing through the fourth wall like the freaking Kool-Aid man to tell you about our friends at Little Spark Films. Imagine you're sitting around the table eating waffles with your friends and they're all talking about this crazy new film they saw on Amazon Prime or Tubi or Plex. So you're like, yeah, it was totally scary. But you haven't seen it and they can see right through you because you're maybe made out of glass like the Kool-Aid man. 
don't be that guy. Go see the torturer right now. Pause this thing. Watch it and come back. Support Joe and Catalina. Oops, I mean Ralph and Musette. Also, while you're supporting them, you might want to see their Hellbound Laments, short films featuring boxes from the Pyramid Gallery and configuration boxes. You should also check out Catalina's Barker and Briefs, where she reads Clive Barker books. Eureka! Eureka! Have you ever wanted to visit Fairbanks, Alaska? Catch the Northern Lights, visit Denali National Park, Chena Hot Springs, or any of Alaska's other scenic destinations? Come stay in our Eureka Airbnb. Use the code BARKERCAST and we'll take 10% off your stay. Make sure there are cool Clive Barker decorations, books, and movies. Maybe you can even join us as we record an episode. Another great way to support the BarkerCast is go to our Tee Public store and get one of our t-shirts. We've got Jose's Baphomet design, Jericho Squad, uh, Cenobium designs by Nina and Ed Martinez, Marcus's Pinhead design, and our old legacy shirts. Just go to www.tpublic.com slash stores slash BarkerCast. You're feeling sore and bedraggled and... Uh... You, you uh, make your way through the gate into a large uh, cave. And there are braziers with fire uh, all around, so you can see it's not dark. And there are what Ralph recognizes, and people who were in Squad 41, like, like uh, Zoe, also would recognize the Nightbreed. Uh, remains of, of nearly extinct tribes of monsters that went into exile and hiding. This resembles Midian, but it's not. Uh, it seems like it's um, maybe a new place. And uh, they, they all kind of look at you, and Zoe, you, you hear in your mind Aset speaking to you. She says, A long time ago, we used to walk amongst the people, and we found that our being in the world with you caused too much strife. One little thing that we said could be taken one way by one group and another by another group. And it started to feel like there was nothing we could do that didn't create war. And so for the sake of humanity, we left the world. But one of us stayed. Apep stayed. He felt that it was for the sake of humanity, but he wanted to stay for the, the tribes of the moon, for the his people. And for that, he was punished. He was divided up into pieces and uh, imprisoned in uh, a column of fire. Now, you and I are going to heal him. You feel the power of a set flowing through your body. Your ankh sort of extends and becomes like a larger rod-like sword. It still has the onk shape. But you feel like with this right now, you could heal uh, Baphomet. Okay. <laughs> do, I, do you need me to cast a spell or am I just holding this up? What am I doing? Uh, no, make a, uh, just make a wisdom check. Wisdom check. Okay. Yeah. I'm not very wise. I only got an eight. <laughs> oh, an, an eight? Okay. Yeah, four plus four. Oh, okay. <laughs> it feels like it's right on the tip of your tongue. There's something that you should do, but you're not really sure how to do it. I'm going to land a magic character shoulder and whisper in his ear. Yes, Sarah. <laughs> you're going to land on, on whose shoulder? Matt's character shoulder. Oh, and ask okay. for a cigarette because I've only got three left. And <laughs> okay. We're in a different dimension. Yeah. Yeah. I hand All the couple. night breed are, are looking up on you, you uh, looking up at you, uh, sort of expectantly. Zoe, they um, you see one who has a leather jacket that looks like it's thirty years old now. <laughs> you see, <laughs> uh, you see uh, a, a, an ageless looking woman with swirls on her cheeks is there also. 
there's a, another one who has like a mauve kind of a skin complexion and he has long tentacles coming out of his um out of his head uh you see a woman who looks like a porcupine you see an adult version of babette i guess if we're gonna i'm gonna use some shortcuts here but <laughs> and uh standing next to uh rachel do you remember the 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 jar that you grabbed on your way in on your way to the cave uh has ashes in it and that's that's also important right now if you it put that, is <laughs> If you put it next to uh you feel like if you put that next to the uh the body of Baphomet that you might be able to bring him back. So make another wisdom check. Let's try this again. Mm-hmm. Can I try Come to on. help? You got a 10. Yeah, you can better. land on her. Okay. Can I land on her shoulder and whisper advice through a cloud of smoke and help her? Okay. What what advice are you giving? You need to sprinkle the ashes. See, I know a little thing about ashes myself. You don't want to keep them in one pile. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, like you making concrete. Roll, you... I saw that movie, those guys make concrete out of cigarette ashes. I think that you know, try to use it like mortar. <laughs> you, you All can I can roll. see is American Horror Story when yeah. uh, the mom poured out her son's ashes and then put a happy face in it. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that one. No, it's not <laughs> shake redemption. You gotta, it's like paper mache. <laughs> Oh, you can roll with advantage, so you can roll one more time. Me? Yeah. Okay, one more wisdom. Let's try this again. Come on. You were doing really high wisdom checks earlier today. Got a twelve. I'm going. I'm still going up. (laughs) Okay, so you uh, you're able to channel the spirit of your goddess, and you hold the ankh in front of you, and walk up to Baphomet and his parts start to sort of adhere together. And in addition to that, uh, you see Onaka appears from the old peanut butter jar. And he Thank says, you for making it peanut butter, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he he looks right. at, yeah, that was from a long time ago. That was the, uh, the very, like this, our second episode. Onaka says thank you and he kind of wanders off back into the crowd he has no clue how much time has gone by for him <laughs> yeah Baphomet kind of gets up and stands up and he look he looks at you and he says like, thank, thank you. you and he looks at Ralph and he says thank you for carrying this for me and he kind of reaches his hand up and kind of squeezes it he says it's been a long time, a long time. you're a missing part of our tribe and he takes one of the tentacles on his head and he kind of pulls it off and it, it pops. And he and he uh, reaches it out towards Ralph and he squeezes a little bit of the uh, of the of the, his blood onto the top of your head. So make a constant now make a charisma saving throw. Does it smell dreadful? No. <laughs> Fifteen. Okay. Uh, you. It burns a little bit, but it, you don't take any damage. Uh, and if I use my my talisman, can I boost it up four points? Boost what up? My charisma saving throw. Or does that do anything? I think that already built it into your score there. Pack boon pack of talisman. Talisman. Yeah, I think that's that's already added into your roll. Oh, it is? Okay, I see. Yeah. yeah. It hurts a little bit, but you're okay. And he says, Welcome, Ralph Mary, to the tribes Ralph of the moon. Mary. And he hands you the tentacle. And Thanks. the tentacle wraps, kind of wraps around your, your hand and becomes a, a lash. Uh, like, a, like a whip you can use. A whip? Yeah. Well, that's badass. He says... Someday I will come back for Someday. that. Call on me, I'll come and take it back. Call and I'll help you. Guys. But only once. Aye, aye. aye. Did you guys just see this? I'm gonna look <laughs> quizzically at the cigarette. Like, what is what is in this? <laughs> Did this just happen? Those are cigarettes from Colorado. 
and for Zoe, the dagger that you have now is also sort of combined with a rod of resurrection. So it's it's really power that's coming from you, but channeled through the the, the device. And uh, and I'll I'll put these into your inventory, so you'll be able to see what all what these things can do. He looks over at uh, Jonathan, and he says, "Mr. Seabird." Jonathan. Jonathan Livingston Seagull. Take this. this is for you. A dead fish appears on the ground. I smell it. Does it look like a real fish? As I like yeah. side hop toward it. Yeah. <laughs> it's um. It, it, the are, you going bite. To, are you going to eat? eat are you going to eat Small from bite. it? Okay. Small bite from the eyeball. You get uh, plus two to any attribute that you want. Or you can spread it out, or one one to each, or whatever, from the fish. Oh, I'm gonna dig in farther. You guys want any? It's pretty Me. good. <laughs> no. uh, Richard, he says, he grabs the sun. He, one of his tentacles kind of grabs the sunglasses off of you, and he puts them over his own eyes, and then he <laughs> gives them back, and he says, and "These will help you find the person you're looking for." Richard. Right. And so those are their glasses of true sight. So now they'll help you see through illusions and and uh, darkness and stuff like that. Future's looking a whole lot brighter. Yeah. And he <laughs> says, uh, "Musette, this is a little chaotic, so I think that this will fit you." And he gives you a wand. Ooh. It's the wand of wonder. <laughs> it, so Brant knows what that is, but basically, when you use it, it casts a random spell. <laughs> it's a probability wand. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Chertovir, um, he says, "Let me see that book of yours." And Chertovir hands him his spell book, and he adds a, a level four spell that that Jose will get to pick later. Says, I hope that these things will help to prepare you. Yeah, yeah. And like Sonny said earlier, you've already faced the hand and the wings. The hand of the unbeheld and the wings of Hepexamendios. You must defeat them in order before they combine. He says, Try to think, when might you have faced the hand of Hepexamendios? I don't know. We fought a lot of things. Uh, Cassius at the at the uh, debate. He, he he thinks you're close, but not. That's not exactly it. Not the hand. He serves the hand. Uh. Well. Uh. All right, hands aren't my specialty. I honestly can't remember. My best bet was, my best guess was the debate as well. Um, I said you faced him, you haven't fought him. Mm. Oh. Be that demon? The one you guys banished Cassius down to hell with? That's what I'm thinking. All these people make us use our brains. <laughs> Gladius or whatever his name was. Are you asking him or are you just thinking out loud? I'm just thinking out loud. Okay. So, guys. I honestly have no idea. Or the what, Aboriginal what children mean? themselves. The Aboriginal children? No. Mm. no. I think we've only heard of also, them. Also, hold on, where's my, where's my notes? The Aboriginal children are a big part of it. Aboriginal no. children. Where's Bentley when you need him? <laughs> or Chodavir. Or Chodavir. Yeah, yeah, I feel like Chodavir would actually really help in this situation. <laughs> the, br the brains aren't here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want me to roll for Chodavir? See if he figures it out. <laughs> Yes. 
I'm doing such a good job of not making decisions. <laughs> he says, I have no idea. <laughs> you're, you're, I like how Trotovir talks this. Uh, <laughs> this <round. laughs> he impersonates Jose like on point, man. <laughs> Not that oh. Noli, Noli and Nick. I'll just call out. Nolianak. But we've had we've run into no, a lot of No, he looks like Nolianacs. he's not a Nolianak. He's a Euromedic. The head of the Euromedic. Yeah, and, and uh when you say that he he uh he kind of side eyes you and, and uh and says I think you're onto something. You faced him before. Not you, Richard, but the rest of you have faced him before. I'm glad Richard remembers. Even he had he, he had a different face and a you guys different told me name. About it. Say what? He had a different face and what? And a different name. No, it's the guy that came. Oh it's the fake police officer. But I'm not sure Jonathan would figure that out because he's not the greatest. No, that's. He says his name was Dexter Handy. Dexter Handy. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to feel excluded. I'm sensing a theme. And his name was Handy. Wow. Wow. The hand. That's, a, that's on the nosy. <laughs> I don't remember that guy. Yep, I do not have that in my notes. I don't notes, have either of those. I legit I do not remember again. that. And uh, here's kind of a, an AI <laughs> version of Baphomet that I did. Oh, cool. Oh, that's freaking sweet. I love that. That almost looks real. It's it's one of his tentacles kind of looks disconnected, which kind of gave me the idea. Oh, that's the one he gave to Ralph. Yeah. He's like, uh, I was falling off any ways you could have it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Sorry. Was Dexter Handy the guy who was uh, um, interrogating us? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Fuck okay. that guy! Yeah. <laughs> I literally just I remembered. Told you, I told you that guy was bad news. I tend to yeah. delete people from Never my computer if I don't like them. That was <laughs> it, it's also It's also rough because we have like one month plus in between all of these, so it's hard to keep everything straight. What, I just assumed that he was working for, not above, Briar. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so me I was, too. I was thinking up. The Aboriginal children work for him. But I never forget a face shapeshifter. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Rimshot. And so he's the he's the hand, or he works he's for the hand. The hand of the unbeheld, but he's also gone by the name Dexter Handy. Dexter Handy. And in the other squad, he goes by the name One Hundred and Twelve. One hundred. Uh, in the Nolianek system okay 112 yeah and then the wings are the guy the big dude that you guys haven't met yet big dude check in fact y'all don't even know about our down. adventure because we just walked into y'all's what did y'all do nothing oh okay yes, the, the mm -hmm. wings of hepexamendios use that you and richard faced it wings of well, we kind of kind of backed it <laughs> so you'll have to face all three of them and it'll be hard that's why Sonny gave you that second test because he wanted to see we wanted to see if you could face a, a difficult challenge I normally operate in like the, the shadows in the background but I kind of feel like we're going to be tossed into the spotlight here soon the hand of the unbeheld will be coming to you Oh. 112. 112. What happens if we... Is he uh, rolling with 78? He, yeah, he's part of the squad 78. And what happens if we just kill Dexter when we see him? And I've got a line in on finding him. He may be coming to us in a couple of days, but maybe we could find him first. Well, we know where he's coming from, where he's going, and what is what they're trying to do. We just don't know why they're trying to do it. They got to go out to Darthur City. 
Well, should we all go to Darther City? Well, that's where uh, Muse and I were going towards when everybody jumped into the portal. I figured we was going to split the party anyways, and there was just going to be a couple of us going to go look it out, or go check it out. So we ran out there and checked it out, but there was that monstrosity in the sky. It was too much for the two of us. So we was, in it, we was unable to find out what happened, what, why Darther City was their destination. I mean, we're looking for Cassius Clay. That's who I'm looking for. That's what I've been sent here for. But now this is it's all starting to like swirl together and well, starting to become, become incomprehensible. I don't understand what the ramifications of this Baphomet May character, this guy here, what he's what he's doing for us. I mean, I understand he's gifting his things. Baphomet just Baphomet is here, leading us, you know, giving us some pointers and. You know, helping these uh, helping these night breeds. So maybe we should uh, go talk to Bentley. <laughs> if all else fails, talk to Bentley. Baphomet says the world is unbalanced. unbalanced. There should not be, and I know this is ironic for me to say, but there should not be gods walking amongst the people. Walking amongst the people. Hmm. I stay in the shadows. I hide with with my tribes of the moon the you're the stopping moon. the one god who usurps all other gods all other gods i have a vested interest in this as well like a long drag that's why i don't go to church well baphomet do you suggest we go to darther city or go find dexter He will come to you. Then let's just go to Darther City, y'all. That sounds good to me. I don't know if that's such a great idea, to be honest. I mean, if they're showing up to us and uh, we're not, because they're supposed to meet us at our headquarters to get that vehicle. And if we're not there, they're already going to think something's, you know, suspicious. By the time we meet up with them, if we have to, do battle with whatever beasts are on the road from here to Darther City, and then we meet up with them. We could be ragtag, and they could roll right through us. But if we show up and wait for them like we're supposed to as a unit at the headquarters, and they roll up, I mean, it'd almost be like having that one up against them, where we know what we know that they have some sort of ulterior motive, but they don't know that we know. But if we leave, it kind of tips the hat. I don't know if we should just take off running towards Darther City. Well, we're all in a bad than a lot of amount of pain, so. I'd kind of like to have a long rest. Long rest sounds nice. Jonathan. Up before we deal with these guys. Were you Whoa. able to figure out the tiles and get us back? Sure, Dovir says, I can, I can do that. Yeah, I was just going to say that, exactly. <laughs> then, then let's go eat some waffles. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to say no to waffles. <laughs> All right. I like one. So Jurdevir starts uh, setting up the uh, the transport with the coordinates for um, back in the Second Dominion. So you're on. By the way, you're on Earth right now. This is a new minion, Midian, but no one has told you like where geographically it is. Because we just spawned into some cave in the middle of yeah. the fifth. Okay, he get he uh, he's able to get it set up without any issues. He's done it before. We need to set up some sort of plan when we get back to the 5th for when those guys show up so that we have our ducks in a row. Are we going to use this as intelligence gathering? Are we going to, you know, are we going to sabotage them and, like, attack them as soon as they get here? I think, I don't think that would be the best option, but I think we should do something. We shouldn't just sit around with our thumbs up our butts when they show up. I think we should have a plan. Agreed. But we, we do have to face them in order. And he is the first step. And with that but, that beast hovering over the city, I'm not sure how much time we have to confront him. Because if that beast is supposed to be the wing, then we should totally fight him at our headquarters where we have the advantage. He can't get into our headquarters because we have the door sealed with that magic stuff that Chordevere did. Yeah, we fixed the door, then he sealed it with this new spell. 
<laughs> we're the only ones that can get in and out of that that headquarters right now. So realistically, what if we allow them in? Could we seal them in? That's what inside, I was going to say. And then they can't get out. We just burn the place down and then they die. <laughs> ah! oh, might want to talk to Bentley. I don't think he's got insurance. I could leave a waffle iron on. Make it look like an accident. <laughs> But well, I we think... could lock them in there and fill it with noxious gas or something like that, where it's not destructive to, towards the property or some sort of spell, where they could—I don't know. We can use bustle and pancake to, you know, lure them in there, then do that. Yes. Yes. I think we should question him though before we just like defeat him. Uh -huh. Or does defeat him mean kill him, or what if it just means to prevent him from achieving his goal? Death usually does that. Yeah, yeah, killing him would prevent him from achieving his goal. But like, what if we were uh, able to uh, get through this without killing anybody? I think death is the Mighty only option. Mighty big gun you got there for a pacifist. Uh, I say let's just lock him in and take care of him. And move on to the wings. Okay, well, let's get back to the Bentleys and... Uh, yeah, we will, we'll, we'll, we'll lock this down. Okay. Let's discuss it over lunch. So you guys uh, all get together. If you hold hands or touch each other, then you, you can uh, roll with advantage, you know, on a charisma save to get through. There's all the this limb goal. discrimination. There's hands and noses and more Is hands. It or or you touch. Perch, perch on someone, yeah, just perch on someone, I guess. Yeah. But I'm not holding hands with any of you guys. You, yeah, or you can hold their sleeve or whatever. Okay. Charisma, you said? <laughs> yeah, charisma saving throw. Whoever's got the highest charisma might want to do that, and you roll twice. Oh, and take I, the I've got a 20 now after the oh. fish eyes. Somehow it made my breath smell better. And Zoe got a, got a 20 charming. also. So you guys are good. You made it through the Innovo, no problems. Ralph got a 21. All right. Okay. But you said we're going with uh, advantage. Okay, so yeah. I got 17, and then this time I got 23. So oh. 23. That's okay, it. yeah, and it's just one roll for the group. I know we did, like, a whole bunch of rolls, but... Oh, okay. So you, you guys all made it. You're fine. You you made it through. Bentley is there waiting for you. He says, what happened in there? Kind of a hands-on experience. You had to be there. And now I have a tentacle arm. Right. Yeah, it's kind no of idea. it's kind of wrapped around your arm like a bandage, and then it comes yeah. out, and you can. But yeah, it's 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 coiled around like, and and it'll unravel when you want to use it as a weapon. Yeah, that reminds me, Bentley. Next time we go to the fifth, remind me to pick you up some cartoons. It just reminded uh, me of it, them. Oh, what was that my would be great. Throw, you know, sorry. if you if you go back to the fifth, you gotta bring me if you you gotta bring me a VCR. We didn't have time. I didn't even know we were in the fifth at first. I'll get you a uh, DVD player. They're even better. Well, I'm not going to complain. You guys look really messed up. I don't think you... Japanese you don't seem to cartoon. have had time for VCR shopping. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... I'm going to take a nap. And uh, it sounds like... Um. Bentley, that we might need to reinforce your house, shop, building. Really? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. So in in two days, the the uh, squad seventy eight is coming up here. Yeah. What okay. time is it? It's like late afternoon, about right. Yeah. Because we yeah. went to the library in the morning, and then yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, well if you no. want to send me the okay, text so, real quick. It's you, you were out for like 12 hours. So it's actually evening. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because that, that's how long it took them to drive down half to the halfway point for Darthur City and then come back again. Well, I'm not an owl, but I'm a bit of a night owl. So Bentley, if you want to send me the fifth real quick, I can pick you up a DVD player. <clears throat> he doesn't have any DVDs, I don't think. No, no, we can he fix doesn't. that too. 
He hasn't he has two HD DVDs and he has video tapes. Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah that's right. we need the DVD controller. player. Get the combo <laughs> that, that rips it from the VHS to the DVD. We needed the <laughs> Xbox uh it was an Xbox, right? We needed the power cord. Yeah, for the Xbox 360. Mm. That's even easier. Well, and, and actually it's but it's only the drive. Way. All he got was the drive for the Xbox 360 to play HD DVDs, so he doesn't have a player that like he needs an Xbox to plug it into. Oh. It's going to be heavier. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, this, no, I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, it'd be nice though. It'd no, be gosh. nice. Depending on how, you know, good accordance on the portal you guys can get, I don't mind only getting a short rest. If we can get the deep D's on the first night. I think your health probably takes priority over DVDs. Well, while we're doing stuff like that, I, I think you you've never seen the magic of an HD DVD. <laughs> 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 and trust me, these, these Japanese tentacle cartoons are worth the wait. What? Wow. Wow. Wait, I'm going to go rest because my brain needs rest for sure. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go to my room. I go to my room. Sure, I'm go says, yeah, that's, that Sphinx hits really hard. I think I'm going to bed now. <laughs> nice show to be here. <laughs> well, math-wise, I'm at about 25%, so I am too. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess that's I'm taking a short rest. Well, long rest will heal you and like long. Yeah, restore all eight hours long. And stuff. Yeah. So and it's nighttime, so it makes sense to get a long rest if you want to. So a- after waffles for dinner, I'm gonna go into the, the lounge <laughs> okay. and major illusion movies on the TV screen. Okay. Because you don't have anything to play them with. Just, just try, try to do the best, uh, the best. Yeah, try to remember. Like, yeah. That you can, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's all just like bird's eye view <laughs> footage of towns. <laughs> that all the movies weird. that he remembers are replaced. I should get all a GoPro. Replaced replace with seagulls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah seagull <laughs> versions of all the 1983 movies. <laughs> we're we're gonna do Predator today. Oh yes, but I'm down for Predator. If it bleeds, we can kill it. We can eat it. If it bleeds, yeah. we can eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll go to bed. Okay. But I'll have another right. cigarette. So I've only got two left. So everybody can click on long rest if you've gone to bed. And I'll talk with Bentley. Is there is there tobacco in the set, this dominion? Uh, yes, it's more of an import from the Fifth Dominion. You wouldn't uh, happen to know where I could get some, would you? <sighs> You're not going to like the answer to this, but Bustle and Pancake know where that kind of stuff is. If you ask <laughs> them, they'll get it for you. Just send them to go get a new player. No, they'll fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, this is what happened. Yeah, when, when the last time smoke. you sent them for a VCR, they brought back that HD DVD drive. Mm. They'll bring me back nicotine gum, and I'm like, I'm a bird. I don't have teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you like, just stick your beak together. Yeah. <laughs> People, everybody probably like that. That actually might not be a bad solution. <laughs> An asshole would give a bird gum. Yeah. Bustle and pancake. Oh, they're idiots. Oh, yeah. Have you seen? I've got uh, pictures of Bustle and Pancake. That looks really cool. I think I saw them. <laughs> <laughs> Look how messed up her eyes are. <laughs> I think it adds personality. Yeah. Do you, like, do you tilt your head when you talk to her? Yeah, all right. Can I borrow somebody's phone? <laughs> he looks left a lot. So I'm I'm guessing you guys are all awake and it's morning time now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. The night passed uneventfully. Nobody broke into your house and tried to steal anything from you. It's because of the spell. 
Exactly. Oh. My tattoos have just been itching all morning. Ah, and uh, I'm with uh, I'm with Jonathan. Man. I need some, I need something to smoke. I only got like four or five cigarettes left. Well, but I can good. rash them out. I just want to get the some phone, smoke before we get pancake over here and yeah you might want to that. do that do you guys know anywhere around here that does any sort of body art modification i'm looking for some tattoos i hear there's like a special ink that i can get oh. i don't have their number well they they're, they live in the in the, they live in the house he wants they're, to call them. He doesn't want to look at them. I can call him from the next room. <laughs> if I look at him, I might melt him. <laughs> Especially okay. when I'm low in cigarettes. Well, let's go. <laughs> Smokes. They cigarettes and, and tattoos. And if we don't have anything else planned for the morning as a group, um, I was going to follow them to where they got it and steal some. Okay. So I know <laughs> I get it in the future. Hell yeah. Yeah. Be that seagull that says sweeping and grabbing fries out of people's mouths at cigarettes. <laughs> they, they, kept, they, they take some coins out of the cash register and they say, okay, follow us. Yeah, basically you you, you follow yeah. them and you, yeah. you see where they get it from. Okay. It's a store that's kind of similar to what you guys are. Do I have to carry a pipe around or is it like actual cigarettes? There's a choice. You can do either one. How do you carry okay. the pipe, though? You don't got no hands. That's that's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> or you can just have it you permanently dangle it from your mouth. I have been keeping stuff in my crop, but I don't think a pipe... And I got a one band around me, but I think I'm just going to put three packs of cigarettes in, like a Vietnam-era <sighs> soldier's helmet, only <laughs> they're around my chest. It's like body armor, too. Wait, you have a helmet Did, around so you can... your chest? No, no, I think I've got the one band to carry the wand of major mm -hmm. image, like the belt thing. Mm -hmm. And I was just going to tuck um, three packs of cigarettes in the, in the bands. But they're all open, so you can just reach down and pluck one out with yeah. your beak. <clears throat> so while, while you guys are, are doing that, um, Bentley says, hey, um, so what are we going to do about about these guys, this Squad 78 coming up here. I know it seemed like Musette and, and Richard wanted to go check out Darth City ahead of them. That didn't, that... So you uh, you, you almost did that. Um, now you've got whatever this other thing is done that, that uh, Zoe wanted to do. So what's next? All right, well, okay. Um, well... It sounds like, uh, you remember that guy, uh, Hansy, Handley, Dexter? Yeah, that, Dexter Handy. Yeah. Hans McGee. Hans McGee. That, he was, like, very insistent on being here and talking at us. He was a butthead. Well, talking at us, not to us. <laughs> uh, he, um, it sounds like he might be coming around again. And, uh... The, there was a big snake flying thing that attacked Musette and Rit and and uh I heard and Richard. about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. It sounds like uh Richard was saying that we who when we come that they're going to come to us and he suggested that we uh try to hold them captive. So we can get information from them. And potentially kill them. And, and then kill them. Or, and then eat them. Or make a, a fort out of their bodies. I like that too. I, I don't like that above. at all. That was horrible the last time you did that. Bro. <laughs> I just if you're going to make a body out of a fort out of bodies, you got to do it somewhere else. But it was like a gingerbread house that it could go inside. No, it was not anything like it. I don't know gingerbread houses very well, but well, I, don't I could do it in the back and we can let them cook in the sun and then they'll probably taste better and have more flavor. Anyway, so yeah, walls could talk. 
no. So, you said Dexter Handy was going to be coming back here again? Hey, I guess here. How do you know that? Baphomet told <laughs> us. <laughs> when is he coming here? Day or two, I think. It was a he's day or two of, yesterday, so. He's wrong with the entourage tomorrow. of uh, Jericho Squad 78. So whenever they get here. Oh, he's in Squad 78? I don't know if he's in it, but I, he's with them. W which, so did we see him when we when we looked at them in the bowl yesterday? I don't know. A lot of stuff's happened since now. I'm starting to get unfamiliar. Can't remember. It, it, he, There's been a lot of head trauma between he yesterday. Was the, and he today. was the tall Nullianek. He was the tall Nullianek that you saw in the. Oh, he in that's the bowl. Yeah, dude. He's coming here. And uh, there was a lot of religious talk going on when we when we traveled across to <clears throat> that talisman thing in the ground. And we ended up in a cave. And uh, they started talking, like I said, really religious uh, stuff. It was a little bit over my head. But what they basically said was that this guy uh, is a part of uh, some huge singular god. He represents his hand. And he's uh, traveling. I guess we know that that group was going to go out and check out Darthur City. So I was just thinking, maybe if we have to do everything in order, we just wait till he gets here and uh, just act like, you know, like we don't know anything. We don't let him see our hand. And then if he wants to get touchy-feely, you know, we're one step ahead. So, so you want to wait for the Squad 78 to get here, it sounds like. Yeah, just speaking from street, you know, I'm telling you, I think we should spring a trap on them. Especially since that uh, that beast is still floating out in the sky, I'm sure. I just don't even want to go out that way. We're going to spring a trap. Okay, so you're talking about setting a trap for one of the other uh, squads in Jericho organization. That's, well, see, that's where it comes down to being tricky. Like, we could have the trap sprung, or like locked in into place and just don't spring it unless we got to but we we act like like everything's kosher when they show up and then if we find out uh, <clears throat> you know there's some ulterior motive or if it's like not to our liking then we can strike or we can make a decision from then but i think we should have at least some sort of contingency plan in place in case they show up and just want to do the same thing to us maybe they just don't even want to talk maybe they want to show up and just roll through us because they're trying to have some sort of uh Objective that, which seems to be this unbeheld, this Apexamindios guy you guys were talking about with that other dude down there, that stone hand guy. Alternatively, we could find him alone today if he's in the city and perhaps get him isolated. He, they're like two days away. They're they're transporting up here from the Fourth Dominion uh, tomorrow. Oh, so now this is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, well, you yeah, guys you, you guys yeah. went to bed and got what? up in the next morning. Yeah, yeah, it's the next morning. Holy crap! <laughs> so if you want I to set some day. kind of a it's trap, head on injury, squad man. Seventy-eight, you gotta do it. You gotta do it today. All right. I, well, okay. I, so I suggest not setting off any kind of traps on another Jericho squad unless you know for sure that that they're really who you think they are. That they're really like bad guys. Well, then how we about call we him as to... we could call him specifically? On, I assume you guys have a phone number, and I could pretend to be Cassius through all of my illusory magic and say he escaped and needs a secret meeting. He was able to escape from hell and needs a secret meeting or needs to meet. That might get him alone. And that might be looking. raising red flags, though. He might bring like a bunch of dudes with him. Well, he's already bringing a bunch of dudes with him. I thought we were trying to <laughs> at least not fight on Jer another Jericho. All right. Well, then how about we don't do that? Maybe we like uh, try to like <coughs> in infiltrate and 
like assimilate into their squad and help them and like get them to invite us along with them. So that yeah. way we can keep close eyes on them. Well, I was thinking we well, don't know what the rest of his squad's compromised. Well, you weren't here the last time, Dick. Wait, what are we talking about? Yeah, Brand was out. So there was a there was a a, po- a point where um, you guys looked through the bowl trying to find Cassius Briar. Yeah, and it kept showing a Uretimek named Oskalo, who looked kind of messed up. He had like blood in his hair and stuff like that. Yeah. <clears throat> well, he's also a member of Squad Seventy Eight. Okay, so those Squad Seventy Eight's gone out to Darther, and that's where that flying dragon is. I mean, we could potentially double. Our fighting capabilities if we roll out there with them. Be two yeah. squads versus that dragon in the sky. And then, we, you know, if we have to, we could like potentially sacrifice uh, 112 to the dragon. That way we kill him first. Yeah, I'm just concerned that the entire squad might be compromised and then suddenly comes becomes a squad and a dragon versus us. Ooh. Because we, we know he's Not compromised. If you're looking at Cassius Briar, you're getting another member of 78. That's two. What are we going to do, guys? I think try to... try to. Um, I can draw, just... draw the corrupted ones away. And if the entire squad comes, well, we'll know we can't trust the whole squad. And you want to you wanna phone call him? Or, or, yeah, something... I'm trying to think of a reason that would draw the enemy away. And if Cassius Briar's already there in another form, obviously a phone call from Cassius wouldn't work. You could invite him to like this special fucking party for the unbeheld like followers. Be like, yo, it's red carpet event, invite only. Do they call themselves the unbeheld? <sighs> Aboriginal children. We just pretend to have a donation to the Aboriginal children. Be like, yeah. <laughs> we need somebody high up for the AB or the AC to uh, accept this donation. I think calling, should... calling all members of the AB. <laughs> I think up. we should put on fake mustaches. Uh, I think that would really, really help. That might throw him off. They'll the never minor guess illusion us. Amongst they'll show up and they'll the go, who are these people? Uh, but seriously, uh, I have a question about the Boston Bowl. Sorry, not to get off topic. Uh, no. Trying to stay on topic. Right. Uh, the Boston Bowl, we all, it only gives us images, right? It only gives Chertevere images, not anything else, not audio. He says, yes, that's right. Okay, cool. That wasn't, that uh, wasn't as good. Never as mind then, my idea's out the window. I mean, because I've, tr- I've called Aldrin so many times, but it sounds like she's not getting any whisperings. Does anyone else know or have contact with someone who's either at Squad 78 or close to people in Squad 78? Because we're just conjecture, <clears throat> right, conjecturing right now, I mean. We can contact uh, members of the squad if you want. No, nah, that would be weird. Never mind. Sorry. That would tip our hand. Yeah, definitely. Let's not go in that direction. We can, we can call him and ask him if he's the bad guy. <laughs> not? Can someone invade his dreams and kind of mess around with him that way? Not mess, but I can listen. Uh... Beer says, I, I can't do that. That's that's out of my wheelhouse. Well, that's why I said someone. That sounds like something maybe I'm, you would be or, or be able to do. I don't think so. Joe, I mean, can you look in the bowl and see where they are right now? I have invisibility, but I mean, it's going to take me another day to get out to them. So even if I snuck into where they were, well, that's what I was thinking, but the invisibility can... does work for a potential for a potential plan of uh, plan of attack. I can go. Like, I can cover quite a bit of ground in a day. Uh, or cover quite a bit of sky. And I can read thoughts, but I can't talk back. So that's what's... Can you look in the bowl, Chodavir, and see how far out they are right now? 
Uh, so Bendley sort of steps in and says, "You know, they're they're not like traveling on their way up here. They're going to take our transport tomorrow. They're in the fourth dominion, and they're going to oh, be in the fourth dominion they in in, city. until they take the transport, and then oh, they'll be I here." I thought they were like driving up there and took that long. <clears throat> um, yeah, I thought no, that they I, were I just, like outside just, of the city too. Yeah, I thought. I that just too. stalled and I told him because our house was messed up that we wouldn't be available to transport until three days. Mm. Can we set uh, set well, the transport to explode? What if we give them food that is laced with uh, something that is truth-telling properties, like truth serum? And then, and then uh, we ask them questions over food, over a meal, because they'll have to eat at some point. You're talking like a there's a spell, uh, zone of truth. Well, I can so just detect that. Probably have that. What I don't know who doing? has that. I don't have if it. If that exists, see, I didn't know if that existed. That's why I was just. That's why I'm just throwing out ideas. Uh, well, it's not a bad idea if we sit down with them on some sort of neutral ground. I can detect thoughts. So and then what's we our can goal? Prepare for. Our goal is not to be apprehended or dead. I tell, I'd like to not be dead. That last time was. Or that last time of getting defeated was pretty sad. Yeah, this sucked. But we have to <laughs> defeat the hand, the wing, and then the heart. And Derek Handy, Dexter Handy is on his way up here. Well, we'll be here tomorrow. Originally, I kind of thought that they were traveling here, and that's how long it took. But if they're just like hanging around waiting to use the transport till tomorrow, then maybe we could go to him isolate him but like what are we going to do once we say say everything works whatever plan we come up with works and we suddenly we have we have the hand and say he's got like two other guys with him. what are we going to do are we going to talk to him are we going to fight him what happened are we trying to get something from him or we well, i think we want some info from him correct me if i'm wrong but he's coming here under the guise of another jericho squad right and that's and so, actually i think the issue yeah we don't so we, we don't, don't know know how many of those Jericho squad members are on his side. And we don't want to cause any injury to other Jericho squad members. That would probably look pretty bad. <laughs> let's just... Well, they did talk about the social aspect of us looking like shit. Well, I mean, Maybe it's was... just a given, man. Look at us. <laughs> well, you guys are all healed up now. It's You've had a night of rest. Yeah. No, but I think Baphomet well, mentioned, Baphomet mentioned, Baphomet mentioned uh, that we were about to be put on stage. Although we already did have that terrible representation at the uh, debate. <laughs> right. so. But this is part two. That was like the before the ending, when, before you guys sent Cassius to hell. So that was like the end of that. But this is a new thing. So I feel like there could be new circumstances applying. So that social aspect, I think, like if we do end up fighting uh, with members of the other Jericho squad, maybe that's going to like get us exiled from the rest, put a target on our head from the rest of the squad, and it would, like I said, exile us from our resources. So yeah, I think it's important to find out who's aligned, who's not. Detect thoughts. Right. My detect thoughts. Perfect. Okay. Is what? Okay. So what we're saying is, uh, but did anyone want to check to see? Uh, about uh what it, sorry Ryan what did you say it was the What's zone that? of truth the zone, oh, of, zone truth. of truth yeah that's a, that's a spell does <laughs> anyone have that okay Tito no says, so we're, me. okay so we're gonna go with Jonathan's detect thoughts uh do we have any sort of uh way to make them a little bit more suggestible I guess just beer well just to ask them questions. Persuasive. I'm very and persuasive. And they think about their lies. Yeah. So and I can yeah, dig a little you, deeper. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's like asking somebody not to think about something. Yeah. Which means they automatically think about it. Okay. Um, Bentley, do we know what time they're going to be here? Are they going to be here around any sort of meal time? Um, what, what, when was it? I think maybe, I think it was 11 o'clock. 
Yeah, let me look. And he checks his notes. He goes, yeah, yeah, it is 11 o'clock. In the, in the morning? Yep. <clears throat> okay, so lunchtime. So I guess let's just make them the nicest lunch that can be made with what we have right now. And then we should tidy up the place. Um, Come up with a contingency for not if, but when shit goes south. Yeah. Y'all should probably do that. <laughs> I feel like maybe Chodavir and Zoe could probably add some sort of extra charms to the house or the or our uh, dining room to help us. We don't want to be fighting in the dining room, though. We eat well, here. It's, it seems like it keeps happening. Hmm. No, well, we can just take the fight outside. Maybe. I don't know. It's upstairs, all right. I'm checking to see if I have anything I can use, but I'm I really don't. Only thing I can do is I can create an object of up to twenty five thousand GP in value that isn't a magic item. It can be more no more than three hundred feet in any dimension. So you could have made us a DVD player. Yeah, yeah I guess so. <laughs> but I could also do. I'm thinking something like a Trojan horse, though. Like obviously. Oh, not Trojan you're talking horse. about the the wish spell on the. On yeah, the, the sword. wish spell on yeah. my sword. We could create a big giant statue of the unbeheld and put it right in the middle of the floor. And whoever drops to the knee as soon as they walk in, we know that they're a bad guy. Well, wish spell, you can do all kinds of stuff to them. Yeah, but these rest up are going to be for like. If I use it, then I can't use it later when we're fighting. But if I use it when we're fighting, then I can like totally reheal everybody, grant us all immunity to a certain type of damage, you can undo a recent event by forcing a reroll of any roll made within the last round, including your last turn. Reality reshapes itself to accommodate the new result. For example, a wish spell could undo an opponent's successful save, a foe's critical hit, or a friend's failed save. You can force the reroll to be made with advantage or disadvantage. And you can choose whether to use the reroll or the original roll. Well, and you Which is also, pretty OP. I think it's kind of OP. Well, and you could also create any spell effect, right? Of a spell of lower level. Uh, As create one object. The uh, basic use of this spell is to duplicate any other spell of 8th level or lower. You don't need to meet any requirements in that spell, including costly components. The spell simply takes effect. So we could be real mean with that. Like well, I just a, got Ralph gave him a GS to today. help us defeat the Aboriginal children or something. <laughs> yeah, because I could do any eighth level or lower spell. The wish is you have to be really, really careful about how you word them. <laughs> <laughs> be careful what you wish for. Yeah. Well, hey, do we want to go to them? I mean, yeah, let's wish, go to them. You could wish he would help us. Like the Geus spell, and then he helps us for a year. I could wish he, he killed him. Do that. <laughs> Do that. I just wish for a death note, and I write his name in the book. Do that. <laughs> that. That's the end of the game. Well, we only get one, right? Like, Gita. we might want to save it. Well, I get one wish per day. Oh, per day? That's one charge. Yeah, on my sword. Go ahead and, and kill it, someone oh, well, now good, and do yeah, one tomorrow. Let's do that. I <laughs> wish we bypass all DM puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Richard's sword. Yeah, so GS at 8th level lasts for a year. And force, you force it to carry out some service or refrain from some action or course of activity, as you would decide. Yeah, but he could have some sort of spell immunity. Sure, but you can try again tomorrow. I mean, he's going to have some sort of spell immunity to anything we try, magically. And unless you guys want to build, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Predator-style log traps, I think <laughs> magic's probably our best option. <laughs> so I am a fan of a good log trap. Like, or Ewok-style. Yeah. Aw, Ewok. You can just yep, wish yep. he would help us defeat the Aboriginal children. <laughs> per Gia's spell and it's only yeah for one year Maybe like. 
like I have thrown out several different types of ideas. Oh, uh, the val- the object that I create cannot be a magic item. Mm-hmm. Ah, mm-hmm. dang. But I can. Okay. But the basic use of spells is duplicate any spell of base level or lower. So do any yeah. spell, but I can't Geas create is a, a magic spell. Item. What's That's what makes G E A S fifth level enchantment. Oh. But if you upcast it, it lasts for a year. And you place a magical command on a creature that you can see within range, forcing it to carry out some service or refrain from some action or course of activity as you decide. Uh, we could we could cast it and have him refrain from defending himself. The, what would be the uh, the spell the, the the DC for for him getting out of that? <laughs> uh, it's a wisdom saving throw. Depending on what the DC of that wish spell is. Yeah, I think it'll say on the sword. Mm-hmm. And while the creature's charmed, it takes 5 to 10 psychic damage each time it acts in a manner directly counter to your instructions. But no more than once each day. And you can't... So he can take 50 points of damage by doing something against... Mm-hmm. Or just ask him to tell us everything he knows. Every day. <laughs> to call us for the report. <laughs> <laughs> or take fifty da- like five d ten damage. I wish I had a spell that. Is there a spell that uh, drops their spell immunity? That's a lot. Yeah, that's a spell that'd that, probably, that... Like, that'd probably be like a key and trip or something. Something that you could use to like debuff their spell immunity. Oh yeah, yeah. There's spells like that. Um, warlocks have them. What spell? Um. Oh my gosh! What am I thinking of? Bane. Well, because one. I'm imagining this guy's probably really intelligent, so his wisdom saving throw is probably going to be achievable for him. So I would what... just want to do some sort of spell that could uh, prevent him oh. from being like OP. Like I, I want to be able to attack him and hurt him versus be like, ha ha ha! I've so got this I've got... spell on. That- Bullets bounce off my chest. Be like, bro, that's my main weapon. It's bullets. It's not <laughs> quite that powerful, but I've got lots of ways to make give him disadvantage on any saving throw he makes versus spells. And so, if he's got some sort of immunity, it won't help. But it does give us a better chance of successfully. You know, I can either try to hold him or charm him or confuse him, and all that stuff is at a disadvantage. So it's not a guarantee, but it does increase our chances quite a bit. And then it wouldn't necessarily require a wish spell. I just want to run up to him and be like, where's Cassius? I wish you would tell me where Cassius is. <laughs> <laughs> tell me. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. I want you to. Not wish, want. <laughs> oh, shit. Bentley says, so what, what's the plan then? Are we going to sit here and wait for him to come to us? Or are we going to go to him? I think it'd probably be at this point better to go to him. Since, like, it's not how I thought originally. Because I don't want to damage up this place again. You want to get down I don't think Bentley has insurance. You want to get... We want us to go down to the fifth... The fourth Dominion? I think we should go to the fourth. And, uh... Or you guys, I guess. I probably would be staying here. We should set up a meeting. Like a secret meeting with him and anybody who knows about what he's doing, and then just have at it there. So the do you, you like want we have to go to... down there, and then we have to get them separated to find out who he's aligned with. Okay, so we're gonna go. Either we can get them separate. Who cares who else is aligned with them? Or we just try to get all of them at once. But I think the whole goal is to just get him really. So do you want wait till me he has to pee or something? Do you want me to ask them if we can transport down to them instead of them coming to us? Is there somewhere near them we can transport <clears throat> within a day or like a half a day of walk? We could go to London headquarters at, in the Fifth Dominion and and then just walk into the Fourth. That would probably be the best idea, but how far away would we be from where they are? It's It's not very far. They're there to guard that entry, so... It would only take like a, an hour or two to get there. But it still doesn't solve our fundamental problem of separating him from the rest of 78. But we can get there. 
then we have to find out how to separate them. How about we just go there and get him extremely drunk, and when he has to take a piss, keep eating him beer. We do that he's here. Religious. Don't you got any beer? He might not. He might not drink beer. He's religious. Or the unbeheld, like uh, devout. Or the is his temple. Of, is his body a temple? I mean, I pack some Indias. Is his. Whatever. Freak show. So which side of the portal are they on? Are they on the Fifth Dominion side or the Fourth? They're on the side. Fourth Dominion side. Okay. Yeah, they're in the Fourth Dominion, so you mm-hmm. could go down to the Fifth in London and walk through the natural portal. But they would the... see you coming, most Probably. likely. Yeah. But I don't, I mean, if we're coming from the uh, the London headquarters, I don't think that they would want to attack us right outside uh, the London headquarters. They'd be like, what up, homies? Well, I mean, like, if I just went to the Fourth Dominion and turned invisible before, or the Fifth, and then turned invisible before I went into the Fourth, is there like a, a light that comes on when somebody comes through the portal or does it flash? Well, you're a bird, though. Like, I'm sure actual other birds who aren't sentient like you or intelligent, probably fly through that portal all the time, so you would just be naturally stealthed out with how happened. No, the, the, it's it's heavily guarded. I mean, it's it was supposed yeah, to be know. natural, but it's it's not. It's uh, it's totally enclosed by Jericho Squad building, so nobody goes through there without the without oh. cooperation from Jericho Squad. But does uh. it like light up or give indication <clears throat> somebody's coming through? No. Why don't I do no, that? I just go do a scouting. Like, just go fly through the portals invisibly, find some place but, to hide and detect But if we're today. transporting you to London, we would need their cooperation oh. to, to to get you over there. And then you can fly through. We could transfer somebody else and me with me hidden as some sort of other, like, oh, I, I left the tea kettle <laughs> on or something. Or I, I need to pick up some English cigarettes. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to do that, that you want to do that today, and we do that today, and so we get more information to prepare for them when they come tomorrow. So we know if it's the whole Jericho squad's the problem, if it's just Hansy's problem, like if the rest of the Jericho squad's still loyal or on our side. I'm not sure we're the loyal ones right now. I'll start making the the uh, the tile. I'll start arranging the tiles for the London headquarters. But you have to figure out what am I going to say when when I'm sending you guys over there. Just leave that. To me. Well, you have to tell me because I'm the one that's called. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was dramatic. Uh, we need, we need to pick up some English oil for the floors before they come tomorrow. Yeah. We're just we're just doing like a holiday visit over to England, and we're just using transporters for ease of access. Well, it, if if you're going on that pretext, uh, we need please get get me a VCR. We'll try. I don't know if they still sell them. If you get it out of England, then it'll be pal. Pal, yeah, we'll have to change the the region. I don't uh, think that works. Okay, it's good enough. I'll get a region free. We'll do region zero. On a VCR. On the DVD player. Oh, a DVD player. Okay, well, we have a bunch of videotapes, but we don't really have any DVDs. Oh, somebody the other day called it dead. VHS sorry, player. California. What? Really? This is the next big thing. I mean, it's what not is? the latest thing, DVD, but it's the next DVDs one. Are the, laser are the... disc. <laughs> yeah, laser disc. <laughs> I could barely pick one of those up, though. I prefer <laughs> DVDs. Yeah, you can go get a VCR or a DVD player and I'll sneak in to the fourth and just listen to their thoughts. What, well, you, you, we've got plenty of money. If you want to get a DVD player and a VCR, that'd be great. We can have both. They make combos. Yeah, yeah. Oh, combo. oh that's wanna, even better. We need a I projection. didn't know that. You can get a burner projection. so you can burn your, your tapes onto DVDs. Oh, that's that's, effort. That sounds like a terrible idea. I, I don't think I'd like the idea. I mean, what's the point of getting it if you're just going to burn it? Yeah, true. It makes a copy. Oh. But at what cost? Uh, what is it? Probably about six, seven hundred bucks. 
What? Okay. Six for, or seven for a VHS two DVD writer. Anyway, I ain't gonna step on your toes, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's just trying to make an extra buck there. Oh no, I I literally have no idea how much those would actually cost. I assumed it like, would be like hard 80, to get one. Like eighty bucks, probably. Really? Yeah. A writer. Like a, the one that you put the VHS mm -hmm. on one side and <sighs> makes a DVD on the other. Oh, huh. Probably go to like a pawn shop and get one for like twenty five dollars. I, I don't keep a wallet. I don't buy stuff. So I don't know how yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan doesn't even keep his paychecks. Yeah. I, I... All right. Well, I've got it set up. So who's going? Well, I'm. I going. don't know. Last time I decided to go. Mistake. All right. I guess. Okay. What? Well, can we all go though? Like, what if we go down there and like all of Jericho's compromise? Well, then they're gonna know we're free, and they could have just come up today. Yeah, that would look pretty suspicious. I'm fine with staying here. I will stay here because apparently I well, start you know, fights. They they can't come up if they can't come up without you if unless the unless I set the 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 tiles. So I could leave it set at London headquarters and then not um, and not change it to receive you guys until you tell me it's okay. If you want to go together. Sounds like we should probably go together. All right, All right let's go. go. Together. Yeah. I'll learn my lesson. All right, one, two, three, let's dive in. Okay. Oh, wait, I got to tell them why you're coming over there first. So what's the reason? Oh, uh... We're just shopping? We want to... We're shopping and we decide to have brunch. In the fourth. Cigarettes from London, brunch in the fourth. So, well, you uh, wait, I thought, fourth. I thought only that the bird was I'm going to I'm just sneaking the into the fourth. Oh, I thought we had to lie about the fourth, too. Oh, okay, he's going to go... You don't have to lie to me, man. I'm on your side. Not you. Okay, yeah, let's do it like that. So that way, yeah, we're in London. Okay, so you're just going shopping is what I'm going to tell them. Yeah. Okay, so... Just a little I, uh, PTO, personal time off. All right. Well, I'd say that you've earned it. So it's morning time. I'm trying to think what time it would be in England. On a whispered What's the time route? difference? Make sure you get the tentacle. Six right hours now. from Central. Six yeah, hours but... from us, so a nine hours from you, Ryan. No, I know. I'm saying between the Second Dominion and England. Mm. It depends on where you're at. <laughs> what? Ninety-six hours. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, that's weird. I never thought about that. Like. Well, he uh, how long he is day? <clears throat> Bentley pulls out his uh, his old Amiga computer and runs the the runs the program that that tells the time difference. Amiga, yeah. Forty five minutes later. Yeah, it's actually uh, it's lined up pretty well. Actually, it's only an hour later over there. It changes because the different different rotations of the the comet around the. Second Dominion versus the the sun around the Earth, and so it's different yeah. every time. So that's why he has to he has to use a program to figure it out. It's not just a set number of hours. He says he, so he he makes a, a call. He says, "Hey, uh, it's Bentley over in the the, the Squad seventy seven over in the Second Dominion. Um, our guys want to go uh, shopping, so we're, they're gonna send them over." Yeah, just just for a day. They'll come back again today. So it's not they're not going to be gone very long. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, you haven't you don't know what it's like in the Second Dominion. They man, these guys need a break. No, no, it's just just for the one day. Yeah, yeah. No, they won't cause any trouble. Uh no, I, yeah, no, I realize some of them look kind of strange. Um, well, you guys can figure, they can figure that out when they get there, right? You can talk to them. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Thank you. Well, they're, they're going to be on their way here shortly. All right. Bye. Okay. Yeah, you can go. They were a little worried that, you know, Musette and Ralph uh, don't look like humans, you know. So uh, do you have some way to, I know Musette, you've actually kind of traveled around the world um, and you just kind of let people think that you, that your blue skin is like uh, makeup. So if you want to be, if you want to just kind of follow that same thing, I guess you could do that. I Ralph mean, I Hutt can disguise self, but I don't know if I want to use a uh, slot for just that, if I can just throw on a hood and call it a day. Yeah, I mean, you're so you're sort of in smaller circles. Musette is sort of famous, you know, for just showing up in places and playing music and, and, uh, and never never goes out of her way to say like hey no this is my real skin or no this is fake she just lets people make whatever kind of assumptions they want to make but yeah and ralph would how do you want to handle that uh, i'll just put on a my trench coat and uh put on a hat okay and uh you know just hope for the best has. I've got a lot of tattoos. I'll just say it's extreme body modifications. You've seen those lizard people over in the fifth before. We'll just pretend like it's just tattoos. Oh, yeah. Eye tattoos. Been... There we go. All right. So you uh you transfer over to the uh to the fifth dominion to London. Make another charisma check with advantage, whoever wants to do the role. Just one person now. Ooh, 25. All right, yeah. You make it through, you're totally fine. You don't get lost forever in the Innovo. Yay. Good. Yeah, so you're you're there. <sighs> you show up and you see London headquarters is uh, seems a lot more formal than all of the other one branches that you've been to. There's a, There are armed guards all around the transport. And... Um, they say, welcome. We were advised of your arrival. Uh, please follow me if you want to head out to, and, uh, and if you want to head out into the city. Um, and Brent, you said that you're invisible? or No, not yet. It's Jonathan's not invisible. It not last that long. I was going to try to slip away and okay. notice, turn invisible right before I pass through the portal and then go from there. Okay, so the, the way this is laid out, the, the, the transport that you guys just came on, you just it's basically you just go down to some hallways into a giant warehouse, and that's where the, the natural portal is. They've just enclosed it with like a big like airplane hangar kind of a thing because it's huge. It's like Stargate. Yeah. But it's, it's a fog, you know, that, that where you pass through the fog, you start in one, one dominion and you end up in another. And so they've tried to enclose it with a gigantic building because they don't That's really badass. know what else to do with it. So All right, you're... I'll flip into a corner and turn invisible and head okay. through to the fourth. Okay. While he's doing that, I start talking to the guards, distracting them, and uh, I ask right. them where's where some good uh, somewhere good to eat while we're in town. And uh, make a stealth check for Jonathan, and these guys will make a, a perception check with disadvantage. Or actually, yeah. Okay, that's really terrible. 20. So yeah, you're you're able to get get by. <laughs> Didn't even wait for my answer. That bad, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It, it, it was a three. Yeah, we're here uh, on a little R and R. Yeah. Well, we have uh, we have some good um, good kebab places and nearby. Um, ah, love kebabs. Those are popular. Yeah. Um, have you noticed any like religious folks around here lately? Anybody outside of the norm? Uh, do you mean? Do you mean here in 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 our squad? No, just like in London, or in the squad. You know, anywhere. Um, no, nothing out of the ordinary. 
Okay, just wondering. Well, all right then. I understand that you have some shopping to do. Yes, yes. We're gonna get some uh, some cigarettes and uh, some alcohol. VHS. Oh, right. and we need a VHS player or a VCR. Really? Yeah. You know where I can get one? Um. <laughs> oh, I believe that there is a car boot sale uh, happening. It's only about a maybe a mile from here. Good to know. Good to know. Thank you. I'll have to check it out. All right. And uh, do we report back to you when we come back through, or do we just step on the transporter? Or is that... Oh no. Yes. Uh, come talk <clears throat> to me, and we'll we'll have it set up for you. What, what was your name? Uh, my name is Jack. All right. I'm Dick, and uh, this is the rest of our squad here. So we'll be we'll be back in a couple hours. All right. We'll see you then. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jack. Okay, so what do you guys want to do? Do you want to do you want to do uh, sneaking bird first, or do you want to do the uh, s- shopping? Well, I think we should do the sneaking bird because I really only need to get cigarettes. I don't really need to shop. <laughs> All right, you are invisible, and you mm-hmm. do you you find a, a door that's marked to the Imagica. Curses, but door. it's closed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There are guards on either side of it. I don't remember which uh, one of Minor Illusion or Silent Image is not concentration, but I don't remember which one was it. Oh. Oh, because would you lose invisibility if you cast a spell with concentration? Yep. Okay. Okay, it's Minor Illusion. So I will Minor Illusion while I'm kind of crouched in the corner. Just the noise of a commotion, like somewhere around the, it's a big warehouse, right? So just like kind of somewhere out of sight. Okay. Like for coming from behind the door uh, on the other side of the door in the warehouse or somewhere else? Uh, I was going to do it somewhere else, but behind the door in the warehouse isn't a bad idea. I think I have to be able to see it. Oh, you have to be able to see it? It, it says, I guess not. Okay. 30 feet, and I just create a sounder image that lasts for the duration. Okay. And so, so what, yeah, what just is the... pounding on the door. Hey, open up. Okay. The, they, they look at each other, and they uh, one of them says, What's that all about? And the other one says, I have no idea. And they, they said, No one was supposed to be coming through that I know of. And they open the door and look. I'll, I'll slip through, and on the way through, I'll minor okay. lose the voice. Like, oh, oh, sorry, never mind. My, uh, just drop something on the door. Uh, you're, the the illusion is saying that? Yeah, like it's just coming, the noise is coming through the portal as I slip <laughs> through. Like, a... Okay, so the, the portal is like a good like 100 feet away from the door. Okay. I'll just let him wonder. And I'll just okay. slip through the portal. <laughs> so so um, make a stealth check with advantage to sneak past them and out through the door. Ooh, that was not... 16. Okay. And um, they're, let's see. 14. So, yeah, you you, uh, you you did kind of manage, manage to brush up against one of them, but, it, uh, but he didn't seem to notice. So, yeah, you, you're able to fly through and into the fog, and now you're in the, the fourth dominion. All right, getting through the portal, do I see, like, are they stationed right around the portal? Uh, yeah, there are, there are, um, there's, there's a small, a small building that kind of looks like an outpost there, like a guard station. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, uh, but, uh, you don't see, like, the Squad 78 there. And you remember hearing that they, they are, they have an, a headquarters in Patashqua. Oh, it might help to know where that is. Um, are there like tracks on the ground or something to follow? Is <laughs> <laughs> um, that intelligence gathering on my intelligence gathering? Oh yeah. Well, I don't. I'm trying to remember if you ever had time to look at the map. I don't think so, because I was spying on blacksmiths. Right. Yeah. Trudovir brought the map back with him. Yeah, and I separated with him before. Yeah. Uh, 
I guess I'll just fly high up in the air until I can see a city. Okay. Yeah. Well, you like, see a big city, and and uh, you see off to the side of that, to to the right of it, a smaller smaller town. All right. I'll head toward the smaller town. Okay. Is there like a path or road out to this outbuilding that I can kind of follow back and see where it starts? Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a road. It leads to the bigger town. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then the there's bigger a little town. side road that goes, uh, th and then from that bigger town, you can take the road continues on to the smaller one. Okay. So I'll head to the larger town and just kind of okay. keep altitude and keep looking for okay. um, any sort of Jericho Squad headquarters or something that looks like a Jericho Squad headquarter. Well, it's you know you know that your headquarters, your Jericho Squad headquarters, is disguised as a store. Mm -hmm. So I guess what are you what are you looking for? Because I wasn't even there for the bowl, so I don't know what they look like. Right. <laughs> Flying <laughs> in low circles. <laughs> yeah. If I see anyone that looks carries themselves like a Jericho Squad member, okay. or any. If there are any arithmetics around, okay, or or nully and accurate, you know, nully and accurate. That's what I meant. Yeah. That's what I meant. Okay, all right. Uh, make an investigation check. Not a perception. You can do either one, I guess. Okay, good. <laughs> a very big difference for me. Yeah. Twenty-two. Okay. Uh, yeah, you do actually see. A Nullian act that looks taller than any other Nullian act you've ever you've ever seen, and from the description, that sounds like that's probably him. Uh, you yeah. Saw What's him. he doing? Uh, he he had stepped out. He had stepped out of a, a small building, and he seems to be kind of just walking down the street. Hmm. All right, I'll just kind of shadow him until he gets where he's going. Okay. And, and it it takes him a good uh, fifteen minutes, but he okay. gets to a sort of a nondescript looking office type building, and he heads in that. It doesn't have any signs or anything. Okay, I'll try to slip in the door as he's going in. Okay, and invisibility uh, lasts for an hour. Yeah, so make a stealth check with advantage. Twenty-seven. I rolled a 20 first time. Wow, okay. And just a sec here. That's really good. See, I told you, this is the one thing I could do. <laughs> yeah. This and run away. See if he can beat a 27. If he can beat a 27, I'm going to die. Sorry, guys. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was the a, best I he, can do. He is sort of a god. No, you, you beat him. So you were able to you were able to get through the door ahead of him. He feels sort of a slight breeze, you know, going by, but he doesn't he doesn't uh, doesn't acknowledge it or notice. All right, he's like going to his office. All right, yeah. Um, so he he heads in in uh, it's the upstairs is sort of a a nondescript sort of office that looks abandoned, and he opens a closet door and it has a, a staircase going downward into the uh, what is probably the Jericho squad offices. All right, follow him on down. Okay, yeah, you follow him down the steps and you see in there, I'm gonna the rest of them are all kind of sitting around uh, a table eating their lunch uh, and you, so you see uh, Uretimek and you see uh, a kind of a, a squat, uh, dwarvish-looking person with bluish skin and scars all over her face. You see a human with kind of a like a curly mustache. He's a bad and guy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, right. <laughs> He's tying somebody to railroad tracks. Uh, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, and you see a, a, a frog-looking guy. And what sort In the of way room that is it? Ralph is a lizard person. This person would, yeah. would this person would be like a frog person. And so is it like a kitchen dining room thing, kind of like Bentley's house? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. kind of similar. 
Um, so I would like to find, like, look around and either find something, you know, look like and see if there's like pots stacked <clears throat> on top of the shelves or if there's mm -hmm. a lamp in a corner or something. And then I would, if there's like pots on top of the um, cupboards, I would, I was just going to try to quietly go to the top of the cupboard and when nobody's noticing, cast minor illusion as a pot that's big enough for me to sit in. And then once that's up, drop invisibility and cast detect thoughts. Okay. Uh, make, I guess, first make a perception check to find a place like that that you could do. 22. All right, yeah. With the twenty-two, you do find um, on a, on the shelf that there's uh, up near the top. There's actually um, a bunch of books that aren't pushed all the way back into the wall, so that you could okay. you could hide behind those books. Yeah, and I'll just put a minor illusion up in front of me of like a book that's fallen off and is leaning okay. it up against the because that doesn't require concentration. Okay. And so then when I'm not, and then I'll stop invisibility and cast tech thoughts. Okay, who are you casting it on? Uh, it's I. It's a radius. Let me oh. pull it back up. I had to turn over to. And yeah, it's so it's a radius, and they do not get a saving throw if I'm just lifting the surface thoughts. It's for the duration. Okay. Yeah, within thirty feet. So okay. for the duration, you can read the thoughts of certain creatures when you cast the spell and ask your action on each turn until the spell ends. You can focus your mind on any one. Okay, it's any one creature that you choose. You can see within thirty feet of you. Um, if it has intelligence of three or lower, or it doesn't speak a language, it doesn't work. And then I initially learn the surf surface thoughts of the creature, um, and that doesn't require a saving throw. And so I can just kind okay. of sit there and scan, and I'll start with the large nullianak. And okay. just kind of listen to everybody in order surface thoughts. Yeah. He's feeling hunger. Uh, he feels like the people of Darthur City were probably not enough, that he needs some more powerful people. Um, oh, he I'm feels like... like maybe some of these maybe some of these idiots will help. Maybe I can even get those Squad 77 people. We'll see. That's good information. So it looks like not all of you, yeah. And I guess, uh, what's the duration? I think it's 10 minutes. Okay. Those are the kinds of things he thinks about. Oh, one He's... minute, yeah. And so I'll, I'll listen to him for about one minute. And okay. then I guess just try to reverse the process and get back out of the portal. Okay. Like turn invisible, right. drop the illusion, and see if I can sneak out behind somebody. Did, did, did you want the thoughts of any of the other guys or is it just, just his? Um, is there a Yurth medic there? Yeah, yeah, Oskalok. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll try there. to read. I'll, I'll listen a little bit to each person. I mean, I only got uh -huh. 10 rounds, so like one on each. And if okay. anything catches my interest, All I'll right. listen to that. But I'm going to try to focus on um, Dexter. Yeah, well, the, the, the Yuretimek, uh, Oskalok. Um He's he's thinking about how itchy it is, and he wished that his uh, his own gr skin would grow back faster. Um. Okay. He, yeah. He, I, uh, he he feels like that other members of this group are idiots and beneath him. Okay, and so I'll swap the rest of the minute, but pretty much equally between him and Dexter. Oh, okay. See if I so not anything not, else. Not the other guys. No. Okay. Because it doesn't seem like they're yeah. on. It seems like they're their standard Jericho. Or I'm assuming they are. And I'd rather listen to the okay the baddies. And I, I I'm satisfied with the information I got already. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any more to it than that. I mean, that was kind of the, those were the surface thoughts. If you yeah, want to and they're just sitting again. eating breakfast, so. Yeah, yeah and the, just... the Nolianak is not really eating like food. He's just kind of hanging out with them, mm -hmm. but the others are all eating. And then I'll just wait till somebody leaves and try to reverse the process. Reverse the. Oh, you mean? Oh, oh I see. The, going yeah, back just to turn invisible, okay. drop the minor illusion okay. of the book, and then try to follow somebody out the door and just head back yeah. through the portal. I guess one more thought is is that you got from uh, the, from the Uretimek is that. Um, it's the, 
what are these guys planning? Why did they really delay us for three days? We could have been there already. All right. Did you want me to just make like one stealth roll to get back? Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Okay. With advantage. Yeah, if you're still, I rolled are you 19. Turning invi- I rolled two 19s. That's are you cool. turning invisible again? Yeah, before that. Okay. So what's the total of that then? 26. All right. Yeah, you're able to get out of the building. Past God, the I guards. hope they got me cigarettes. Yeah. So all in all, that whole that whole trip is probably about two and a half hours. Okay. That, that seems reasonable. Yeah. And you're able to make it back to the London headquarters. All right. Um, and so you guys, whoever wants to, can make an investigation check to try to find what the things that you're shopping for. Gage. Investigation. Looks yeah, like... I'm only a plus three. You're only a plus three? Oh. I'm a plus one. Okay, I think I might have a better one. I should have hired. Are you Brian, at the car, car boot sale right now, or did you decide to go to like a convenience store? Or something? Well, for cigarettes, I think we should be able to hire those simply. But for yeah, finding both. the niche item of BCR, I think we should mm-hmm. investigate. Yeah, right. and and uh, okay, and yeah, so you, you, yeah, you don't have to roll anything for going in a convenience store and buying those. So it's all it's there. I mean, you and you guys have basically have uh, debit cards with your First investigation, you know, with your money that has been direct deposited by Jericho. So you guys have plenty of money to cover stuff like that. All right. Just on um, investigation. Okay. I'm a plus four. But did we okay. find a VCR? All right. Yeah. Make well, it. No, we stopped out at the corner, st- at the convenience store first to get the cigarettes for you yeah, and, and we're headed to the. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and that's all done. That's been taken care of. Yeah. 11. <laughs> 11? The investigation check. Okay. And actually, 11 is the number I was thinking of. Yay! Uh, you, you did actually. You did. You were able to find not one that burns them onto DVD, but you found a combo drive, a combo player that will play videotapes and play uh, DVDs. Good enough. Does it have a remote control with it? Uh, he's the the guy. The guy that you asked about that. He goes, ah, oh, just a second, and he starts digging through all of his stuff, and he pulls out a remote. He says, no, that's not it. Just a second. He keeps on digging around. He's like, oh, this one has the same brand name on it. This is probably it. There's no batteries in it, though. Oh. What size? What Do you sell batteries? No. No, <laughs> No, we'll just stop at the convenience store on the way back. All right. Okay. Okay, well, how much? I'll buy it. He says, oh, how about... Uh, 75 pounds since it comes with the remote this thing's like 40 years old make a persuasion you, check i'll give you 15 he said make a persuasion <laughs> check. yeah make a persuasion check persuasion plus three 18 okay he says uh okay well how about uh 20 pounds uh, I'll take it. Sounds okay. good. All right. So 20 pounds. You got yourself a, a combo a VCR DVD player. All right. Cool. So I got what I came for. All right. Did, did you want to buy any movies while you were here? Were you looking at the movies, Musette? No. No one? Anyone? <laughs> Any, okay, I guess. Do you have v, VHSs or any movies? Where are your movies? Well, it's a it's, so a car boot sale is kind of like a, a flea market sort of a thing where people just have their their trunks of their cars open, and so you can go around to all the different tables and see what people have. So basically, it's like walking around Trader's Village. Oh, we don't, do we have time for that? I don't think we have time yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you've got plenty of time. I mean, he. Uh, Jonathan took two and a half hours so well I'm going to lug this thing around okay what do you guys want to do I'm still trying to get something to eat man 
Okay, well, I guess we should go uh, find some place to eat. Well, there's some right. of those kebabs. Guys, kebabs. Yeah. Let's get some kebabs. All right, and yeah, and you for following the directions that he gave you, you've got pretty clear direction, so it wasn't too hard to find. So were the kebabs good, though? Like, was it a good recommendation? Because kind of picky. Yeah. Uh, it was, they were pretty good. Yeah, not, not too bad. I wouldn't come back, but, you know, I'm happy I came. Not every day you have English kebabs. All right. So, um, after all of that, and you picked up batteries on the way, uh, on the way back to for the remote, and when you push a button on the remote, the light comes on, so the Wait. remote isn't dead. Do we need a converter for the plug-in? Uh, do you? Re- yeah. Did you? Did you look at? Um, did you look at the plugins at Jericho? At the in the second dominion. Yeah, I don't know, man, because we're over in England now. I know it's from yeah. the fifth, but yeah, I think you guys were using U.S. standard plugs. Does anybody? In, anybody can make an intelligence check to see if they noticed. It would be like two twenty power in England, and and uh, we got a nine in the, in the U.S. Anybody else want to? Oh, what's the check? Or? Oh, sorry. Intelligence, I can do one. Oh, Zoe got an 18. Seven. Okay, cool. Is that going to work? Yeah, so so Zoe, you, you recognize that the plugins were pretty similar to England, the plugins that they had, that you guys have at the Jericho Squad. And that's because England was the first place where people came and went into the, uh, into the other uh, reconciled dominions. So a lot of the technology there is based on stuff they found in London. So, yep, 220 Touché. plug will work. Woo. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's go see if we can uh, see if Jonathan's back. All right, so you and you pick up your batteries on the way, and the light comes on, and it the, the remote seems to at least power on and do stuff when you push buttons. Hopefully it's the right remote for that machine. It's the same brand name, so it should be okay. It's a magnet box. <laughs> so, yeah, you get, that, uh, you get that taken care of, and you head back. Are you still... Is Jonathan still invisible? Um, I... It would last an hour, so I can... Yeah, I'd probably wait invisible as long as it lasted or until they got back. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I'm just thinking about you. Um, you know, where were you hiding for the... You you get back roughly around the same time as them. Mm-hmm. Well, once I get back back, like, as long as they don't yeah. see me coming through the fourth Dominion portal, I'm pretty sure it'd yeah. be like, oh, I got back early. Yeah. Okay. I found a dumpster. I don't know why they were paying for food. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys all catch back up again in the in the uh, second Dominion or the fifth Dominion London headquarters. Did you guys get me anything to eat? Yeah. Um, I toss a pack of cigarettes at him. Perfect. <laughs> Did you guys get any movies? We got the we got the player. Uh, but nothing new? We got to watch all those old ones again? All right, let's go. I got. We'll talk when we get back to Bentley's. Yeah. All right. All right. They've got, and, and they've got it all set up for you so you can head back. Okay. And then when we get back, I'll just fill them in on everything I heard mm-hmm. as a shortcut. And they say, uh, do you want us to contact uh, Bentley and and get it set up to receive over there? Yes, please. Okay. So they they do that. You know, he's he says, okay, they're they're ready to come come through. Five minutes. Okay. Yeah. So he says, uh, let's wait. We'll wait five minutes for him to to set that up, and then we'll we'll head out. So five minutes goes by. You wait. You um, and you get on the the express, and somebody needs to make another charisma check with advantage or saving throw. Yeah. 
24. Okay, and you make it through, and nobody got eaten or killed or lost. And you're back. And you've uh, only used about three hours of the day so far. All right. Like I said, I'll, once we get back, I'll fill them in. It looks like the majority of Squad 78 is okay. But, uh, and I did need, I was going to ask you the name of the Earth Medic that needs new skin. Uh, Oskalok. Oskalok. And, uh, and Chertovir knew who that, well, you didn't know that, but Chertovir knew, knew who that guy was because he knows all the Uretimex. And I'll explain to them my assumption that that's Cassius. I heard him talk about need new to regrow his skin, and that they are wondering what we have planned for them. But it looks like it's just those two within Squad Seventy Eight that are problematic. Hmm. And I'll just yeah fill them in on the rest of so basically like as if they had listened to my okay. spying, which they did. Yeah, All right, did so a successful spying mission. Yeah, that was that was so, lit when he said his skin was itching. I was like, "Oh no, it's Cassius!" <laughs> so, so Oskalok is not Oskalok. It's Frank. He's uh, he's. You say he's Cassius? Like I said, I never forget a face shifter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, uh, and we're inviting them here tomorrow. <coughs> and they think we have something prepped. They're on to us. Oh, shit, we do have something But if prepped. we can show that they are not loyal to the Jericho Squad, the rest of Squad 78 should be on our side. Did you see how many other guys are in Squad 78? Uh, yeah, it was in my report pending. <laughs> when I described what happened, and I'll describe all the people I saw. There's a human, there's a prog person, there was obviously the two targets, the Nolianek and and, and Ethac. They're Ethac. they're in in yeah, in the in the in the second dominion they're in Ethax. They're the dwarfish looking people who don't feel pain. Um, oh yep. And then Brant does not remember, but Jonathan tells you the rest of them. I can repeat it if you want. Yeah, that would be helpful. <laughs> okay. So so there's a there's an Ethac um female and she has a couple of daggers. There's the the Nolianak, of course, you know, he's your hand of the unbeheld. Uh there is a a, a human with the twirly mustache. And we, you didn't really get much. No, you didn't really get anything from him with the thoughts because you were concentrating on other people. Uh, there is Oskalok, who um, you guys have kind of determined is is uh, Cassius, uh, and he's 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 got the skin of a Uretimek, but he had um, like in the seams of his hairline and stuff, there was blood. Oh. And uh, and then the frog person. His name was Renfrew. End report. <laughs> yeah. So you think that, so you're telling me they know that we know they're up to something. Oh, they know that we know, but they don't know that they know that we know that they know yet. Can't let yeah. them. Uh, yeah, and, and what, what the thought was just to it was that it's because you guys because Bentley delayed it for three days. They're like, hey, we want to come up right now. And he said, well, we're not ready yet, and our yeah. house is a mess, and you, it's going to take three days for us to get it ready. They, they're not buying that. So it's not anything you guys did. It's just Bentley trying to, you know, trying to delay them. So I guess we're going to let them come here then, huh? Yeah, and if we could somehow think of a plan to get them to reveal themselves in front of Squad 78, I mean, really, if we can just prove uh, Oskalok is Cassius Briar, that pretty much should be all the proof we need. I've got his sword. I'll rip his face off. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> be like, see, look, <laughs> look who he is. I one time asked you guys when 
when Ralph first gave me the sword that if it would cause an emotional reaction, Cassius saw me using it when I wielded it against him. I don't know, because I when I got it, sword. I hadn't seen him since. You think if I bring this sword out in front of him? He might cry. That he might reveal himself? I think that's a good idea. I mean, I, I, he's had that sword as long as I've known him. Um, he told me he was more than 200 years old, and I don't know how long he's had that, but uh, I think it was a long time. Do it. That's what I think we need to do, is something in connection with this sword and, and him. Maybe we talk about uh, destroying the sword that used to belong to Cassius. And see how he responds to that. And then we pull it out and let him see that it's not destroyed. Well, no, we just say, let's do it. Let's destroy it. And then that's a good idea, but. I don't want to yeah, destroy so the sword. Destroy that's a pretty dope sword. Uh, yeah, but I mean, he's not going to let you. Sure. And just We'll just keep, you know, bouncing the ball back and forth until it's like, okay. Like step on it. Like, ah, uh, ah. Uh, pretty much. And back off a little bit. Be like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Start flexing it. Yeah, sure. Because everybody else will be down to destroy it because cash is mm. suck. Yeah, so yeah. let's do that. I guess you know Jonathan's going to go set up the VCR because I got to get okay. going. So what, what what we could do here is is have you guys uh, you can you can plan in the Facebook chat like for what you want to do, and then we'll have it set up for next time. I want to okay. use the wish to create a okay. replica of the sword that we break. Instead of actually damaging the real sword, that's not a bad idea. You you wouldn't. I think that you could do that in a way that wouldn't waste the wish spell. Though I mean, like a, an illusion, or I don't know. It's up to you guys. That's a good idea too. All right. Yeah, we'll we'll discuss it. Yeah. Get, get partying. All right. Thank you. Yep. Say happy birthday. Thank you. Happy I will. birthday. Stay right here. Ryan says happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> so, all right. Thanks a lot, guys. It was fun. Good game, dude. All right. Bye. See you later. My first actual stealth mission that worked and didn't all right. yeah, that was start awesome. a fight. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Thanks for listening.